Hi, everyone. Hey, yo. Welcome to the wonderful world of Hunger Heath. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just woke up. Sorry, y'all. Oh, you did? Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Welcome and... <laughs> to Hungry Heath, where you are. I'm Hungry Heath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is amazing. You are not a classically trained chef. I'm a self-taught home cook. I've studied <laughs> under several television chefs. I have a PhD from YouTube University and a black belt in Google Food. I love to cook. The only thing I love more than forgetting my lines is my wife. The sensation of Shelly eats steak. <laughs> Together we host what you're watching right now, the Friday Night Feast. We're going to cook up an entree, maybe a couple little snacks, show you all how we do it, and then spend the rest of the evening just chewing the fat with all of our friends in the Hungry Horde. But tonight, we have a special edition for the very first time ever, y'all. Ever. We're having a remote interview. We well, Y'all have seen it a couple of times where we've actually had people on set on our house join us. Well, tonight we're doing, uh, like I said, a newie. Um, we're fixing to uh, welcome Shelly's coach. And we ain't got much time before she's going to arrive, so we're going to get started on some stuff. Yes. So, there, yeah, if I'm you're new here, <laughs> normally Friday nights we show you how we're going to cook something up, and then we uh, cook it, we eat it, we tell you how wonderful it is, or maybe not, and <laughs> then we chew the fat afterwards. But tonight, my coach, if, if you've been with us for any length of time, you know I've been trying to get my coach on here uh, just – I've had her for going on two years now, so I wanted to, you know, have a chance where we can interview. At first, we were just going to interview her and put it out as a video, and she was like, nah, I really want to connect, like, right away with your audience, so how about I just come on one of your lives? So she's going to be here about 7 p.m. tonight, so we're going to run things a little different. So we're not going to be just reading everybody's comments while she's here, because I really want to utilize her expertise for you all. So anytime I see a comment uh, or basically a question for Samantha, then I'm going to read those and then she's going to answer. So just think of any uh, coach questions that you have, keto questions that you have. Um, you know, she's been keto since way back when it was Atkins. Um, so, you know, any anything that you have, I'm we put out lots of, you know, posts and stuff on Instagram and everything and on our community tab where you can go and kind of see her program and how it works and her philosophy when it comes to keto and how to utilize that. And so if you have questions from that, please, please, when she comes on at 7, have those questions ready because I want her to see, hey, you know, the Hungry Horde is like awesome. And y'all are be so welcoming like you are to everybody who joins our lives new, how you've been welcoming to us. So just really welcome my coach and uh, let her know, you know, you're excited that she's here. And I just feel like this is a great opportunity because like I know going on four years of keto this month, you know, the first couple of years, I was like, I hear people talk about coaches, but I don't know. Like, do I need a coach? Should I get a coach? Like, I had all kinds of questions, but I never really had the opportunity to actually be in a live setting where I can ask a, an actual keto coach any questions that came to my mind. So I hope you all really utilize that tonight. We really appreciate it. So again, I'm Sorry, I'm not going to be reading like everybody's comments, but when she's done, so she'll be leaving probably about, she'll probably stay about an hour. And then when she's done, then we're going to finish our food. So stick around because we'll definitely chat with y'all then. And so tonight, what are we making in our Instant Pot? Our version of the Mississippi Pot Roast. We're, of course, going to change it up. Well, you know we can't follow the recipe directly the way they uh, originally wrote it. So mm -hmm. we have to our spin on it. Yes. So what I found today at Aldi, actually, is I have a three pound. Is it three pounds? Yeah, three pound. And it says bottom round roast. And ours is special, y'all. It was 30, 
percent off at Aldi, and it was four ninety nine a pound, and then thirty percent off. So yeah. I, that was actually cheaper than a lot of the other grocery stores. So with that, we're going to use the rest of this bottle and juices, these pepperoncinis, and then I have these uh, pickled jalapeno slices and the juices, all of that, and then I sliced up. I just bought some jalapenos at Aldi, but they were all packaged. But it was a really good deal, so I got them. We got them home. We're like, well, these are soft. This one's soft. Let's go ahead and throw it in there. And we found one is actually cracked in the center. Yeah. Believe. So I, I cleaned that one up. All that's diced up. That's what this little container fresh is. Fresh jalapeno. Yes, yeah, it's all fresh. I'm going to throw in there as well. And then we have our own blend of a a ranch. homemade ranch. And we topped it off with some of the pork and good ranch. And of course, y'all know we're not going to cook without our Redsman, Redmonds. Mm -hmm. And what else are we not going to cook without? Our Texas Five Spice. And we're going to do this all in the Instant Pot. We're going to put it in it at manual high uh -huh. for 45 minutes and then let it natural release. I think you already said that. I'm so nervous, y'all. Uh -huh. I'm really, really nervous tonight. Um, and then we'll let that natural release. And we're ready for it, really. Right. And so by the time you know we're done um, and Samantha has answered all of your questions then we'll our dinner will be ready so i thought that was perfect and then also we're supposed to add onions to this yeah and then i was gonna go buy some onions today but i was like wait a minute i forgot i had some diced or there yeah diced onions in the freezer so i just thawed this out i'm just gonna cut this open juices and everything just throw it in there as well because uh, most people add water or even a uh, beef broth to theirs but i figured we got enough juice here and then the the meat itself is gonna make enough juice awesome so all right. It's going to be real quick and easy. So you're going to get started on that. I'm going to say hello to everybody. I hello, see everybody. Carrie's here. Purple Love and Nana's here. Howdy, Brenda howdy, howdy. Foley is here. Welcome, you all. I see. Let's see. And if you're I wondering about this. Play it again. Yeah, here she is. This whole week, we've had uh, chili. It's been kind of uh, brisk here in Houston. So we just had chili the whole week. So I have a little bit of remnants left in here. So I'm just going to cook on top of it. I mean, yeah. beef is beef. Okay. And then I see Linda's here. Welcome. Patty is here. Hey, hey Patty. Hey, hey, hey. Shauna hey. is here. Hey, hey Shauna. And, and I'm just going quickly down because I want to get the caught up before the coach comes. Just Jen is here. Hey, hey Jen. Jen. I know we did start like a minute early. We're just um, super excited, y'all. Yeah, I'm excited and nervous. Shauna is here. And then plus, I was like, well, we could get going on our thing. So we have plenty of time to get all this done before uh, Samantha comes in. Somebody's going to play sous chef for me, though, with the seasonings. Shauna said you needed a reset button. Uh, Lori's here. Hey, Lori. I'm not doing a BB&E. Uh, 22. <laughs> what? The reset. Oh my gosh. 22Q Cat. Hey, welcome back. She said she got to see the trailer this week. That's nice. awesome. And then I see Sana, Mrs. Perfectly and Perfect Keto is here. Welcome. I'm going to open it on top of here because all the juices yeah. are in it. Marie is here. Hey, Marie. Keto Simple. Hey, Dustin. Rocky Mountain Girls here. Susie's here. J Just Jason Keto is here. Hey, hey, Brenda everybody. is here. JC is here. She said she's looking forward to tonight. Yay. I am too. Y'all, she's not my coach, but I get to eavesdrop a whole lot when Shelly's doing her meetings and whatnot with her. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot just by that. Yes. And Don is here. Hey, Don. But she said she can listen. That's great. Reichwin is here. Okay. Um, Do me a favor. Huh? And start adding some of the seasonings. Oh, okay. And then uh, Blue Dove said, well, she's scared that her questions might come across as rude. No, like, so this was three tablespoons of ranch. You know, we like our seasonings. And I'm going to do about two tablespoons of salt. And we'll do like a, a teaspoon or so of the five spice. So now I'm trying to, to code how many of these are. It's like a one. Mm -hmm. Two, three, am I even on camera? Yeah. Four, five. Oh, there's a whole bunch. I'm just pouring them all in there. Uh, there's about half a jar. But go ahead and ask your questions, Jamie. Like anybody, don't feel like it's rude. You know, she can, she's really good at, like, I 
if y'all been here any length of time, you know that I am, and it's like half a jar of jalapenos, right? Well, it's less than half. It's okay. mostly all the liquid. Uh, but if y'all know I'm just a very blunt person, so I have definitely probably said <laughs> everything so. you can imagine to my coach, and she she's really good. Uh, just Jen said she's excited about meeting Samantha, and she did the master class and was impressed. I know. I did that master class, too, and I was like, okay, I think her and I vibe on the same level. Simpatico. And I would say that's something that's important if you're getting – up high if you're getting a coach um if you're getting a coach you you got to have that good connection with them where you feel like okay this is a person i could be a friend with right you got to have that good connection there and definitely when i saw her program i was like okay i i like i like her mindset like her her thought process and then what I actually did, and what y'all could do as well, it's free. You can talk to her for free. She'll do a free consultation with you. And we were like actually on the phone, I think two or three hours. Wow. And I was like, okay, like we really vibe so well that I was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm set. Like, I, yeah, this is going to be good for me. And that's how you know. Sometimes... You know, I, I, there's so many different coaches out there and honestly, there's a few out there that I was like, I mean, I like them, but I don't feel a good, like, I don't feel the chemistry. So this sense. is ready. I'm yes. going to go put this in. Awesome. And then we can move on. Uh, now it's a set it and forget it. Always the peppers. And Brenda liked the money. Jamie said, oh, that's a good deal. Thank you. Our um, dinner is special. That's right. Haley's here. Hey, Haley. Carrie said Heath is a ranch hand with the homemade ranch. Oh, he's a ranch hand, all right. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Said I'll do great. Oh, good. We got a question for Samantha. Let me see. Shut that this. down. Copy paste it just in case. Yeah. I'm I'm oh, I got it starred. Okay. That's awesome. So as you ask your questions, I'm gonna star it and then I should be able to yes. Then now I have a way to just go back to the starred. Little swerve a little bit. Do any hey, of y'all do y'all any of y'all do this? These empty jars. I rinse these out and save them. And we have oil or whatnot to throw away. I pour it in this and then throw it away. Instead of going down the sink. Yeah. Well, I've been fine doing that. Uh, well, I don't need to rinse them out. Renee knows. Huh? <laughs> oh, Shelly King is here. Awesome. Hey. Shelly King is also one of Samantha's clients. And it was so exciting to see, of course. If anybody follows 80 Keto um, or he was high fat, high fun, his mother, Mary Ellen, who he's mentioned before, and he's had Samantha on his program too. So you go look up that interview as well. But his mother, Mary Ellen, she's like the best. Like she's just so nice and she's so encouraging. So she's part of the Facebook group as well. And so it's like you have a nice community right and then when i saw shelly king on there i was like oh, i know her and plus you know she spells her name correctly so of course we're like oh okay this is awesome All right um, the instant bot just said it's on okay go gotcha cynthia's back hey cynthia and crafty carter borish hey she can't can't stay on but we'll check back later well i'm sure we'll be here hyla uh ready set keto's here said hey hustling while out awesome Kim, Kim Ramitz, Ramitz is here. Love seeing you seasoning lots. Oh, definitely, Kim. Welcome. We it's a do spice love of life. Se to season. Okay, good. I got another question here from Jamie. Thank you for that. Uh, Shelly said, you will love Coach Samantha. She is amazing. She Aww. seemed pretty cool. I, yes, she's awesome. And she's giving us tips for our, on a cruise, too. That's why yes. I love it. Oh, yeah. So all of y'all that are going on the Royal Caribbean cruise, Samantha actually worked for Royal Caribbean for six years. So feel free to ask some cruise questions, um, especially if it comes to, you know, how do I stay keto on Royal Caribbean? Royal Caribbean's doing these food changes. What do you suggest? Because I'm going to give y'all a heads up. I told her about how... Um, that the low carb 
people were kind of like, you know, the organizers are like, oh, don't, don't try to make a lot of changes when you order your food, right? I'm sure y'all saw that. My opinion is, and I mean, this is my opinion. I've only been on 29 cruises. Only. Well, it'll be 29 on this one. I pay for the cruise. I'm going to get what I want. And I have always made adjustments. That's why she's the warden. <laughs> and I've always made adjustments because to me, if I, because even though that food's included, you still pay for it. It's not free food. That price was figured into your cruise price. Yes. So you're still paying for that. My, you just prepaid. So my thing is, yeah, I am going to ask for adjustments. I also always do a dietary request beforehand. Uh, so 45 days before the cruise, y'all. And I'll, I uh, will put that, of course, in our Facebook group. But I do send in a dietary restriction and say, you know, hey, look, we're gluten free. If you're dairy free, whatever your restriction peanuts is. Peanuts and almonds. Peanuts and almonds for him. And they have always been excellent at making accommodations. But again, it is important, though, to put in that dietary restriction. It is up to you. I mean, no policing. If you're like, you know what, I'm just going to order things how it is. If that's that's how you are, that's fine. But I know um, some uh, people, like I know, uh, I think it was Patty. Somebody asked in the Facebook group, they were like, okay, but here's my thing. Like, I... I feel like I might get sick if I end up eating like gluten or different things. You know, what should I do? Because, you know, we're not supposed to put in special requests. I'm like, no, you can put in special requests. So, it's your body. You can yes. tell them how you want to protect your body. That's right. Master Gator is here. Hey, Renee. <laughs> um, she loves doing that to us. Yes. Uh, and everybody Shana, is, if, if you're wondering or not, I'm having a little string cheese appetizer. <laughs> Uh, Shauna, it is Mississippi pot roast. Texican. <laughs> yes. Oh, we got another question for nice. Jim. That's awesome. Jamie said, yes, I'm also blunt to a fault, and I'm not sure I see the value in coaching. Why well, try to be, uh, we'll try to be open-minded. And that's how I was, too. I'm telling you, Jamie. She was for, a little bit like, what? Yeah, for two years, I was like, that's so silly to get a coach. Like, come on. But I think she'll kind of explain to you why it could be a valuable resource for you. Cause it's, you know, in life, we all need tools. And I feel like coaching is another tool to help you in your journey. Mm -hmm. That's my point of view. But again, I was right where you at, were at uh, Jamie two years ago, or I guess more than two years ago, I was just like, that's just silly. Why be a coach? Like, why would I need a coach? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So that's all I need to do. Um, so that's why, again, ask. She She's really good about it. Thank you, Jen. Um, Cindy said, having issues, might have to use my phone. Oh, oh that's all right. Platte River Keto. Hey, hey Scott. Welcome. Wrong? Wild Turkey Bluff Coach. What is best? Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. That's a good one. What was it? Uh, she has a question for Samantha. Mm. Jonah's here. Hey. Toy TQ Cat, this could be a 16 hour live tonight. <laughs> I don't know if she'll put up with us for that long. Jodell's here. Hey, hey, hey I hey, post hey. the horse barn up early so I can watch. Oh, awesome. Nice. Yeah, Lori's got questions. Good. Haley said he needs to take a nap before dinner. I'm feeling this is going to be a long live. Y'all, a little pro tip, y'all, or a little uh, behind the scenes, a little uh, news nice. flash for y'all. She's already started working on next week's trailer. Because <laughs> y'all are awesome for submitting all your pictures so we can use it in there. We've already started collecting them. Yeah. Good. I like that. Thank you, Jen. Jen put another one. Oh, Rocky Mountain Girls got another one. Oh, y'all are so awesome. Yes. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Da, da, da. Sana said, I agree about the cruise food request, Shelly. That's like someone telling you how you can spend your own money yes nan's here hey nan hey, welcome hey. back now the only problem i got um, though is that i don't want us to be like the troublemakers on the cruise now <laughs> no i you know what i mean though well it's like a double-edged sword there i don't think we're being troublemakers because my thing is and, and i even flat out told i think it was kathy was like yeah we want to make it on easy on the kitchen i said look 
I get that. But here's my thing. I feel like a lot of us within reason, right? I feel like many of us, if I just order, for example, the salmon and what I believe it really was Patty, what she found out is this, the herb crusted salmon, the herb seasoning actually has gluten in it. I'm sure what they do is combine it with breadcrumbs. I mean, that's usually how you see it at a restaurant when it's herb crusted, uh -huh. the crust is the breadcrumbs. And my thing is, and so Kathy, Debbie, and them, I mean, they're great for organizing this, right? No, no shade on them. And I get where they're coming from because they're like, well, we don't want our group to feel like, you know, we're nitpicky. But, and I told Kathy this, I said, look, a lot of people, if they just order it as is with the herb crusted um, salmon, one, you might not have eaten gluten now in a year, two years, however long. And now all of a sudden you're going to do seven days of it. Imagine how horrible you would feel at the end of that. But then two, even if you just got like this, the plain steak with butter, but it came with a potato or mashed potatoes and say. something else, you're going to be like. If you're a carb addict yeah, and you're, you're trying to break that cycle. Mm-hmm. You're Why making, would you introduce that to yourself? If somebody was an alcoholic, you're going to ask them to tell them to just to have the beer or have the soda, I mean, the, uh, yeah. the cocktail on your menu. And, you know, if it's brought to you, just have it anyways. Right. So, if, I mean, it's, to me, it's the same thing. Yeah, because if I was an alcoholic and I go on a cruise and they're like, well, you get free booze, so don't tell them you don't want it when they put it in front of you. Right. What do you think an alcoholic, like they might be able to push it away for one meal right, or one time, but then after several days of constantly seeing that and everybody around you partaking, it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe just, just this week kind of ideal, right? Yeah. So what I told Kathy is I was like, no, some people, if they see a potato or they see some kind Rose. of carb on their plate, it's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for them to just be like, well, I'm just going to shove this off over here and eat this steak. Like, I mean, come on. That's great for other people who are just low carb or what have you. But I feel like for a lot of us, no, that would be triggering. And that would be something that you might feel like, okay, that, that's going to be hard to do for seven days of doing that, especially when the cruise itself is not low carb and you're already going to see all of that. So you don't need that brought to you on your plate. That's my thing. Um, okay. Let me make sure I did skip. I just wanted to spend the, uh, instant pot so I could actually see the dial so I can see what's going on with it. I, I, for yeah. some reason I put it in a blind spot where I couldn't see it. Oh, that's okay. Cindy, you can still take it. Marina said, amen. Preach heat. Um, oh, real dog, Jerry. Hey, 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 brother. I thought you said you were gonna have your eyes done tonight, Here but hey, welcome, bit, anyways. But have an issue with the dilation. Uh -oh. oh, man, I'm sorry. I hope it gets the feeling better mm -hmm. for you. I agree, Cindy. No different than an alcoholic. That's what I was. That's, I mean, I may be oversimplifying it, but that to me, that's the easiest way to explain it. And then, uh, Renee said she addressed her order everywhere. I'm not bashful one bit. If I'm paying and I want to enjoy it without feeling like crap, that's I amen. What I want. That's Bravo. how I feel too. Because um, that boat is floating on my money. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Don says serious FOMO. Oh, just well, like Don. Well, y'all can still come. I told y'all, you said, I heard you in one of your videos that y'all like to travel with your RV. We have room in our driveway for you to park that thing so you can come at least visit for the meetup before the cruise. Mm hmm. Come on. Yeah. And Jen said, yeah, she's one of those. She's a carb addict, even if she took a bite. I mean, that's, it's true. It, that happens, y'all. I don't like um, self-sabotage. Right. And there's no reason for it because, again, you still pay for it. And my thing is, this cruise is holding 6,000 people. Mm -hmm. Even if everybody in our group, which is about 350 people, all had dietary restrictions or all made adjustments. 
that's not even 10% of the ship. And I'm telling you, as far as dietary restrictions, I'm sure they get a lot more than that. So Damn. having 5% of the people say they have a dietary restriction is not a big deal. They have systems in place to handle the dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. They have those systems in place for a reason. Because yes. they know they have customers that have those issues. Yes. That's why they developed this way of doing it. Susie said gluten's a real issue. Yes. One time I ordered burger patties and they didn't remove the buns. I ate the patties, threw away the buns, but I had a bad anxiety attack uh -huh. later that day. Yeah. Those, I mean, it, 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 especially if you're thinking about a lot of times, like if you get a steak or a fish or whatever, and it says it comes with say mashed potatoes, a lot of restaurants want to be fancy and put the meat over the mashed potatoes. So right. it's not like they separate it out. They're trying to do it like a presentation thing. Yeah. So, no, I'm not going to. Don't be handing me food that has. Because y'all will even go to restaurants and ask them straight up if we can just order all a cart. Because that way we can make mm. sure we're not getting booby trapped. 22 Q Cat. I, I have some list of them, but definitely maybe just. <laughs> If you want to start adding them to the chat, that would help. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Renee said, just like I provide a service that people make requests, and I adjust per person. I have no problems doing so. It's what we do as humans for other humans. Exactly. Um, Jamie said, I don't want to put myself as having an allergy or intolerance. I got the salmon plain last time, and it was too dry. I wish I had gotten melted butter, but they only brought cold pats. Well, and to me, you're not listing it as an allergy or intolerance. I mean, in, in my opinion, yeah, I do have an intolerance to gluten. And he's definitely got intolerance to certain nuts. So I like, it's a dietary restriction. So you dietarily, you're restricted from gluten. So you're not saying I have an allergy. You're saying, hey, my dietary restriction is gluten is uh, seed oils. And they don't need to know why either. Yeah, they're they not going to ask for the list. Proof. That's all you got to do. Right. So that don't feel bad about saying that because you're you're not you're just requesting a dietary Dude, restriction. <laughs> well, she's not even in head of that because you're going to be sending it directly to Royal Caribbean. Right. You're not sending these through Debbie. You're yeah. sending it directly well, to Royal Caribbean. I'm just saying the advice Caribbean. we're giving everybody. Yeah. I just want people to stand up for themselves. Yes. It's your and health. Because believe me, last year, a lot of people ended up with the C word right after. A lot of people didn't feel good. And I really feel like part of that was, you know, oh, well, I'll just have some of this and I'll have some of that. And I'm telling you, it's poison. Gluten and stuff can be poison, especially if you do it several times over a one week span that builds up in your system. My opinion. Well, especially for certain people. Yes. Depends on, uh, you know, how you re react to it. Keto Simple said, one of the things that gets easier with time being around foods that are not keto friendly and having no desire to partake, just Correct. picking around and getting what works for you. Right. And that's very possible. I, I mean, too. I could be like that nowadays, but again, I don't feel like, um, everybody is to that. And sometimes seeing it again, three times a day, seven days in a row, that can be a little overwhelming, you know, especially towards the end. Uh, Renee said, I didn't work this hard to be where I'm at to blow it on something so easily fixed. Exactly. And it is easily fixed. Uh, Jen said, I like to pre-plan and control my off-plan meals, not nickel and dime myself because a waiter couldn't remove a portion of the dish for me. That's what I love about on the cruise too. We I figured out when we first, first started putting in these requests. This was even pre-keto we were doing it. They actually come around. Like, say we're already on the cruise right now. The waiter will come over to the table and give you the menu for tomorrow night's dinner. So that you're able to pick out what you are actually able to eat, you know, to uh, litigate your, or mitigate your, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, uh, the your allergies, your restrictions. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Lynn. Yes, I got the email. Oh, she wow. sent the email with the questions. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, Elaine said she's never been on a cruise, but she has lunch with family after church on Sunday, and being the only one doing keto can be hard. Yes, oh, I definitely. Bet. I bet. Definitely. And that's the one thing. Oh, Lisa's here. Hey. Um, no, not yet, Lisa. She'll be here at seven ish. So any Ooh, moment two now. Minutes, yeah. Um, and that's okay, the just thing. Came on. Okay. That's the All thing right. with um I forgot what I was going to say, y'all. Restrictions. Uh, yeah, it, it can be hard. And if you're on the cruise, if you're struggling, reach out to us. Yes. We are in this together. So if you're on the cruise and you're like, you know what? I When I go to the buffet or when I'm walking past the donuts, mm -hmm. when I'm getting a hot dog, like it's really hard. Find us on the cruise. We will help you, right? We're here to support each other help each other and be accountable to each other. So if you need accountability, go join our Facebook group because I have the RSVP in there for our barbecue meetup and just be like, look, I'm going to be on the cruise. I need somebody to help me be accountable, you know, and we can all be there for each other. Cause I know the struggle is real, you know, especially if you, I know a lot of people, this is like their first or second cruise. So they can have a challenge because they're, this is the first time or the second time that they're seeing all this on there and it, it might be triggering. So, Hey, we're all here for each other. Um, right. Exactly. Sana said if the cruise line can't cater to a majority party, that's boarding, then they shouldn't have hosted low carbon cruise events. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 22 Q cat said, I sent the email. Oh, I read that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shauna said, also, I don't like the thought of wasting food, even if it's carbs I don't want. Right. Exactly. I, and I get that. And some of us have that as well when we're like, like I was raised like, oh, you better eat everything on your plate. So then when you see, <laughs> you know, something on your plate, it it is. I used to get in trouble for that so bad. Right. It's another level, right? Because it's not only like, I know I shouldn't be having this. Now you're having to fight sometimes that childhood trauma of, but I'm supposed to eat everything on my plate. I'm starving kids in Africa. Right. And I was like, well, give it to them then. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Lisa. She said I'm looking great. Always. Oh, excellent. Another question. Thank, thank you, Wild you. Turkey. Nice. Um, Let's see. Jamie said, that's the thing. They technically don't arrange our low carb. They just provide a conference room. Right. Right. And that's what, that is true. That's what we, it, and it is just like a small percentage, but yeah. again, on a 6,000, 5%, and, and that's even if 5% of the people ask for dietary restrictions, it's not going to be a big deal to them. I'm sure that they already have that. And that's why they also ask you to notify them 45 days ahead of time like I said, the so they can plan out. They, these cruise lines, they're used to this. They plan it. They know that that's why they have the is, systems in place. Right. But again, that's why you have to notify them ahead of time. And I have done this not only for Royal, but even when we went on Princess, I did the same thing. And, and uh, um, the other one, too. Carnival. Yes. Yeah. And I'm telling y'all, they and even last year when we did Royal, we did the dietary restriction. It they bent over backwards trying yeah. to help us and make sure we got what we needed. Because they understand if mm -hmm. they keep us happy, we want to cruise again with them. Right. It's right. called pleasing the customer. Exactly. Let me see if I just want to make sure she didn't message you message or me or anything. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Keto Simple said, any creators going on the cruise going to make content during the event showcasing how to navigate a cruise like this on Keto? Yeah. I mean, we put out all of our videos last year. Yeah, so we plan wanna, on doing another one. Yeah. If you want to go look at last year's cruise, we yeah. did a daily vlog, yeah. showed how we eat, how what options are. And we did a lot of promo beforehand, too. Yeah. And, we, and we're going to do some more, yes. like, updated videos, but we did put out videos last year, like, um, like I talked about the dining, there's a whole video on dining yes. on Royal Caribbean, but we'll do an we updated have a whole playlist for that. Yeah. And we'll do another one as well, but yeah, we'll definitely vlog. We plan to even go live. Okay. All right, y'all. Uh -oh. Um, it is time. She's here. So we are so excited 
to have just my amazing coach on our live tonight. She has significantly helped me in my journey. Now, a little bit about Samantha. She has lost over 75 pounds, y'all, and maintained that for over a decade. She has been coaching for over five years, and she is a certified nutrition coach from the National Academy of Sports Medicine. She is not only a keto specialist who can help you with your keto lifestyle, but she's definitely helps with the mindset. And I'm telling y'all, the mindset is the most important thing because we can all figure out, okay, this is keto, right? That a lot of that can be pretty black and white, but the mindset I find is the biggest struggle and what he, she has really helped me with so much. Also, she helps you stop that yo-yo dieting. Even in keto, I see keto yo-yo dieting. She can help you stop that and eliminate the diet mindset once and for all in her program, the Diet Destroyers. So everyone, let me introduce you to my fabulous coach, Samantha Souza. Kelly, that intro, I'm like, wait, that's me? You make me <laughs> good, I know you're not my coach, but I get the eavesdrop. Well, I know said, you do. I learn from y'all. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for that amazing intro. I'm so excited to uh, get to see you guys like face to face, both of you, because I, I can hear you sometimes when you when you eavesdropping, but I don't get to see you too much. So uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh well, no, thank you. Yes. Like I, I'm I feel just so privileged that yes. you're actually here tonight. <laughs> Um, cause I talk about you. So I do like a little weekly thing. I started doing it and I talk about you all the time. And I'm like, Oh, Samantha, like she gave such valuable information because what I try to express to people all the time, especially if you've been here any length of time, like the mindset is such a struggle, right? Because especially like me, cause I've been overweight literally my whole life. Yeah. So that, that mindset is such a challenge, and I feel like that's a challenge for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, mindset to me, the way that I kind of explain my coaching style and approach that I feel like may be a little bit different than other people is I, I always compare it to like a house, okay? Like you can have somebody telling you exactly what to do or like what foods to eat or like macros or blah, blah, blah. And that to me is like the, the structure of whatever program you're doing. Right. And to me, I kind of equate that to the walls of a house. And you, if you have a no foundation, but you have a great structure, it really doesn't matter if you don't have a foundation. So for me, education and the why behind everything that you do, that's the foundation of a house. But you can have a great foundation and great walls, but if you don't handle the mental and emotional side of this journey and there's no roof on that house, then who cares? Because when you're in a storm or it rains, it doesn't matter how good the program is, doesn't know, it doesn't matter how much education you have. If you can't keep the roof on, then it's all a moot point. So I think that that's the most important part of the house. And it's the part that I feel like, at least in the coaching space, is kind of forgotten about and just looked at as like, well, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not this. So I'm not going to try and focus so much on that. I'm just going to give you the structure. But people need that roof. Otherwise, when there's a storm a brewing, it don't matter how good your foundation is or, your, or the walls of your house are. Who cares? Nice. Yes. Perfectly said. And that <laughs> You're always so eloquent. With, <laughs> no, like, you know, a lot of times when I do my check-ins, I'm just like, blah. Like you said, I just like, like I type how I talk. And I love and that. It, <laughs> but I you always that. said so eloquently. I'm like, oh, she, wow, she says it so much better. <laughs> Julie, it's almost as if it's my job. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We have lots of questions. Everybody's okay, been pumping. Great. I've been pumping everybody, you know, start question. So if you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Yay. So Jen said, yeah, there is so much information available on the internet. What is the benefit of going with a coach? 
how's it different than what you can find with Dr. Google? No, oh my gosh. Um, well, Shelly, I mean, I would love to give my answer to this, but also you can give, I think, testimonial to that as well, because prior to working with me, had you ever worked with a coach before? No, no, okay. I was very much kind of like anti-coach because I was like, I, I can read Dr. Google. I could go on here. I see how to do keto. What do I need a coach for? Yeah. Um, and, and, and we can kind of bounce and volley back and forth because of what you just said. Um, but in, in my opinion, I think the problem with Dr. Google, so to speak, is that especially when it comes to the low carb and like ketogenic space, there's a, so much information on the internet that is conflicting. And one person will be like, Hey, you should have this, this, and this, and this, that amount. This person says, I wouldn't do that. I'm doing this. Then they're both telling you that they're a keto specialist. They're both telling you that they're a keto coach. They're both telling you they seem equally legitimate. And then you have um, like healthline.com or these other random websites that are funded by random companies and who you don't know what to trust. And I think that when you do the Dr. Google approach, you end up getting analysis paralysis, who to trust, who to believe, whose advice should you take? And then what happens is you end up doing nothing or even worse, you end up trying to implement a little bit of what everybody's saying. And because they're conflicting, you're going to probably see a negative effect from going that route. And then you end up blaming the ideology of low carb altogether because you're like, oh, well, that doesn't work. And what really is the case is that you didn't necessarily either do it correctly or another point that kind of happens with Dr. Google is that you are an individual and you know from being within the program that I don't coach everybody the exact same way, um, hardly at all. We're all under the same diet destroyer umbrella, but everybody is different. And again, that boils down to, okay, the education, nutritional science is not going to change person to person, right? Nutritional science is what it is. But when it comes to the formatting of, okay, now that we know all this, how do I implement it into my life? That's going to have to vary person to person. So having a coach that knows you and knows your life and knows your personal story, whether it's the logistics of like your health markers, the medications you're on, your, your routines, your, your day-to-day -day life, and then your mental state, your emotional state, your, you as a person, how do we now take all of these things and build it onto you? That's not something you're going to be able to figure out with Dr. Google. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree because that that was the thing. Like before, I got Samantha as a coach, and I feel like it's even more nowadays. But back then, four years ago, like oh, okay, this is traditional keto, and I started doing that. Then I heard about carvor then it was like oh you got to eat carvor high fat that's the ultimate keto and then i was like okay well i got to be carvor because that's even more healthy yeah. and and nowadays it feels like and i see it all the time in various keto groups where it's like oh well this influencer not they're not even coaches yeah sometimes an influencer says oh this is what you need to do like i tell people hey i'm high fat and other people will be like, no, you need to have high protein. No, you need to do this. No, you got to do B, 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 and E. No, you got to do. And you hear all of these in here and you're like, well, I guess I'll do this for a week. Or I did this for 30 days. But with a coach, especially the way Samantha has her program, is it's like, we're not going to try something for a week. I mean, that isn't going to give you any data. And Samantha's whole approach is we got to collect data to see what is and is it working, which means you're going to have to put time in. And that's what I've done with Samantha over like the two years. We have figured out like the high protein carnivore only approach didn't benefit me. Like mm -hmm. having that much protein, my body was not that responsive, but we had the data to back that up. And sometimes when you go through Dr. Google or another influencer, when you're doing it on your own, are you truly looking at the data and collecting that data and able to look back on the data to see what's going on? Mm -hmm. Most people don't. It's also an issue of sometimes when it's just you and you alone, 
um, you, you're too close to it that you can't see the forest through the trees. And sometimes having a coach that knows you and knows your journey can be like illuminating aspects of your journey that maybe didn't occur to you. Like, oh, did you notice that X, Y, and Z happens whenever you X, Y, and Z? And then it's like, oh, no, I didn't because you're too close to the journey. And also sometimes because we can be so emotionally attached to our outcome as individuals, it takes somebody who's an outside source who isn't, doesn't have the same emotional, there's the same investment. I'm just as invested as your journey as you, but I'm not going to view it from the same place as, as you, when you, when you might be seeing it through a different lens because it's you, right? It's tinted, it's tainted a little bit. And somebody from an outside perspective can be like, no, this is the reality of the situation and illuminate things. Um, hey, Shelly, um, cause Shelly King's here. I just saw in the comment. Um, it can illuminate things for you. And then that's also helpful because, um, like I said, the, the other reason that working with a coach is super important is that you might be um, a little bit stubborn and like, well, I've read this, I've read that, I've done this. And like I said, you end up trying too many different things and then not really being able to pinpoint it. Whereas when you have the guidance of somebody, they're going to put you on a very specific path, or at least I do. And that way we can kind of narrow down and like eliminate the possibility of like, well, was it this or was it that? We get actual answers and actual data because we're we're organized on, on a, a trajectory, not just like trying to grasp at straws. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like so many times, Samantha, I would check in and I, you know, you know me, I check in every week. I know, you do, times, I know you do. There have been times when I'm like, I'm just not going to check in because my mental state has been so low and I'm so angry. And I'm like, well, this is obviously what's going on. And then Samantha will review it because she's so much more level headed. And she'll be like, <laughs> Girl, are you seeing this is what's going on? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, so I lost a half inch, but look at this and this. And she's like, okay, look, this is what's going on. And it's like in myself, if it had been just me, I would have been so focused on, but I went up two pounds instead of saying, oh, but I lost a half an inch. Oh yeah, this is what happened last week. No wonder you're having water weight. Mm -hmm. Whereas Samantha will have that like uh, Jiminy Cricket voice and be like, no, like, look, let's look at this without the emotions. Here's what's really going on. And she has like saved me so many times where I've been like, okay, yeah, Shelly, you're being way too emotional over this. Yeah. And, that, and that's normal, Shelly. Like everybody's like that. That's not like a you thing. That's a we thing. That's a, that's a person thing. Yes. And that's why coach is also amazing. Yeah. Um, so here's another question. Yeah. Someone wants to know, and of course, of course, you ain't, you know how to answer. She sure. said, how much did, does your lifetime membership cost? And do most people who spring for that actually stay in contact and on plan long term? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's a great question. I, I have a hard and fast rule that I don't discuss pricing uh, without communicating with a potential client on a consultation, only because it's so hard to explain everything that the program entails. So without a point of reference, it, there's really no, there's nothing. Oh, first of all, also, Shelly, you can corroborate. There's nothing out there to compare it to. So you can't be like, oh, this is so much more expensive than X because X doesn't exist. There is no comparison thing. This doesn't, there, nobody's offering lifetime. So not only do I want to get to know also if it's a, if it's the right fit for you, I also need to know if you're the right fit for me because it's a two way street and through discussion so often I find that maybe my program isn't the right fit for those people. And instead of being like, let's get into the nitty gritty of what my program entails, let's not even waste our time. I'd rather point you in the right direction of something that is exactly what you're looking for and is a better fit for you because so many people, um, they're not in either the right headspace or their expectations are a little bit not in line with what I do. And that's why the consultations are so important, but the consultations are free. And I've had so many people who I didn't end up working with either because it wasn't a good fit or um, for other various reasons. And they always come away with that was such an insight. I, I, I tend, I tend to, um, opportunities to educate whenever I can. So regardless of whether we end up working together, the consultations are never a waste of time because you're always going to get something out of it because going back to the Dr. Google question, 
you're going to have somebody who actually like is hearing your story and, and hearing you say, these are the common pitfalls that I'm experiencing. This is where I tend to get trapped. And you're going to get feedback from me. Of, you know what? I would try, I would try this. I would try that. And it's free. And then if it ends up being a good fit and I think, oh, all the things that you're describing that you're looking for, that you're struggling with, that's what I do. Then we'll can get into maybe if the program is right for you, but it, let's not put the cart before the horse when you can actually get some like, you know, free education on a consultation. Hopefully that um, answers the question. And then the second part of the question was how many people um, actually end up using the program lifelong. I mean, I've had clients who I've been working with since the iteration of the program over and even before that, who then became diet destroyers when that program was created like four or five years. So it really can be the kind of thing where four or five years, that money is like, Hoo -hoo, where was that? Um, and it's been really awesome to get to know people over the course of so many years. And like you were saying, Shelly, like that allows for so much data collection because we're not in any hurry or we're not on any deadline of like, well, I hope that, you know, I only have two more weeks of my program. I hope that I can like figure this out by then. And there's this inherent pressure. And then that tends to make people make mistakes for lack of a better term. I don't like to use mistakes as a word, but like just as a colloquialism, like as a phrasing, um, it tends to force people to feel so much pressure that they end up not doing what they want or set out to do. Um, so when you eliminate that timetable pressure, that's why it's lifetime. So I want to give you the freedom to take that pressure off when bad things happen, you're not going, well, I this whole week was a dumpster fire. It's a waste because I only have two weeks left in my program anyway. No, that's not a thing because this is going to be something that you deal with for the rest of your life. Like you said in the beginning, I've been in maintenance for 12 years now. It's still something I think about every day, but I don't think about it all day every day. And it's not a part of who I am as a person plaguing me of, I feel lost. I don't know what to do. What's tomorrow going to bring? I have, don't feel like I'm in control. I haven't felt that way for 12 years, but that, that it doesn't mean that I don't think about my choices every day. Cause I still do, but that's the goal is to make it a blink and you move on with your life kind of thing. But it's always going to be for the rest of your life. You're going to think about it. Do you know what I mean? That, that's just an inevitability. So you always want to have somebody in your corner. Yeah. And I have to say, as far as, you know, who's, I mean, I've been with Samantha for two years now. And when I first just came to the point where I was like, okay, I really think I need a coach. And I looked and I was like, everybody's coaching program is like six or eight weeks or, and then you have, then what happens at the end of that? I was like, okay, like I know where I'm at. I'm, I'm like, I don't think in eight weeks that's going to figure me out. And then what am I going to have to do? Keep doing it over and over and over again for how long it's like it took me i've been overweight like my whole life and unhealthy most of it like i didn't think i was gonna fix everything in eight weeks so yeah it was kind of like oh okay there's you know to get a coach it's not gonna be cheap because you're hiring a specialist you're hiring somebody to be there in your corner and then knowing that samantha it was lifetime I was like, okay, that made me, that took so much pressure off of me because I was like, okay, so if I don't get it right in this weeks, it's okay because she's still going to be there. And that to me is the best thing that you, I mean, that, that's like your biggest um, benefit is because you've got that time to collect that data to figure things out and not be at the end of an eight weeks okay now what do i do yeah. do i hire that person again like what do you do then eight weeks goes by so fast look we're what basically if you started on january 1st we're already six weeks into this year right exactly and going back to the dr google thing um prior to doing diet destroyer and lifetime format um you know programming, uh, I offered the limited time thing too. And so often I would encounter clients who were having amazing success, feeling so great, were telling me nothing but positive things. And whenever it would come time for me to be like, okay, it's time to re-up because you're at the end of your eight weeks or 12 weeks or whatever. Um, inevitably after maybe one or two cycles, they'd be like, I love this. I love working with you, but I kind of feel like I want to switch it up. So I'm going to try something different. And I'm like, so you're getting good results. You, you like working with me, but you still want to try something different because 
you just want the novelty of something different, even though you kind of found something that works for you. And that happens more often than not, because again, we start to read articles, we start to do this, we get distracted, we have ADD when it comes to like what we're doing with our programming. And instead of coming to me and being like, hey, let's switch it up together, they would just go, I'm gonna try something that's the polar opposite and just kind of see what happens for the fun of it. And then when it would backfire, it's like, why are you shooting yourself on the foot? And so when you create something that's lifelong, it actually changes the psychology of your brain to feel okay to continue doing the same thing, even if we adjust things. So obviously, Shelly, you can speak from personal experience. We've changed your approach a million different times um, with take as we collect more data. But at the end of the day, it's always our relationship that's only going to continue developing, whereas you're kind of starting over every time you try something different. And that's actually prolonging your journey. It's like taking a detour when you're trying to get to your destination over and over and over and realizing, oh, that detour actually took me back to where I was. But like, what a great scenic route for what? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I agree. <laughs> uh, another question is, uh, Jen wants to know, what's your overall strategy or approach with your clients? What's a typical meeting outline with them? And do you only... Uh, do nutrition or do you add in fitness? Okay. Um, my overall strategy or approach. I'm not sure how to answer that, Shelly. What do you what do you think that that means? I feel like your overall strategy or approach with clients is you listen to your clients and figure <laughs> out where they're at. Because like when I first went to Samantha, I had done carnivore for over a year. So I was like, look, carnivore is the best thing. I'm supposed to have high protein, high protein, yeah. high protein. And she yeah. was like, okay, yeah, but you know, why don't we do this? And I was like, no, I'm not going to eat less than a hundred grams of protein a day. And so I feel like you really are good. Your approach is, okay, I'm going to listen to what you're telling me. I'm going to read between those lines. I'm going to kind of tell you, hey, this is what you need. And how Samantha kind of, how she worked with me is she's like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I know this is what you need. I'm going to slowly direct you there to where you'll be like, yeah, okay, what you told me was right, but I came to it on my own conclusion. But she was there guiding me the whole time. Like, okay, yeah. I'm listening to you. How about we do this now? So it's like you knew where I needed to go. And I was just being my stubborn self and like, no, I, this is what I, I heard. And you're like, okay, well, let's kind of tweak this a little more and more and more until you got me where I was like, okay, yeah, Samantha's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just kind of like how it is with anything. You know, um, I talk about in my free how to end the cycle of yo-yo dieting masterclass about trying to get a dog to go into a cage. If you just tell a dog, we're going to the vet from across the room and point to the cage they're probably not going to go in there but if you like slowly but surely start to walk over there and like are covering the cage and they start to follow you with the treat by the time you're at the cage they just kind of go in you kind of have to come at it from that approach sometimes your body actually functions the same way um i i in the master class i don't actually use that analogy on this topic but it does kind of work for this as well um and in your case shelly you came in really hot with with that approach and you're like well i want a coach to help make this work for me which is interesting because you were coming to a coach because it wasn't working for you and that you were insisting on continuing with that approach so we adjusted it a little bit um but it took some time for you to be like you know what okay um i can see now that this maybe isn't the best thing i'm willing to try something different and because like, like we were saying there's no limited time there was no pressure to get you there because you're going to, you were going to learn that on a soul level a lot better if you tried and failed than if I just told you to do it and you were reluctantly going about it. Um, it's the same reason why when you learn how to ride a bike and you fall off, um, you kind of learn a little bit what not to do every single time to the point where in 20 years, if you haven't been on a bike, you'll remember how to ride a bike because of all that trying and failing. Um, and it just, that was just part of the journey. You're not going to expect to get on a bike and know how to ride immediately. Um, it's through kind of those, those, those pain points and those, those points of struggle in your life in anything that help you really learn those lessons. When it comes to um, a typical meeting, um, I don't know if you mean the consultations or like our weekly check-ins, 
Um, <clears throat> but the the weekly check-ins. Um, my clients submit um, a series of answers to required questions every week along with their progress chart. And then every single client gets a detailed video reply from me. That's roughly two to 10 minutes, depending on how detailed the check-in is. Um, obviously, if you only give me a couple words, the video ain't going to be that long. But I think my, my record for longest re video reply for a check-in was 15 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I don't ever say that that's the likely uh, story, but I, I got a whole novel. So they, they got a whole novel back. Uh, but it's nice because you get to see my face actually talking to you directly to you every single day, but you don't have to worry about scheduling a Zoom or talking like that in live time because not everybody's schedule can accommodate for that. So you can send your check-in at your own time. You're going to get the video reply from me. It still feels like we're talking and relating. I mean, Shelly, you can testify to that. It feels very much like it's happening in the moment, even though it's a pre-recorded video, right? Just the, in the terms of the style. Um, and then we also do do a weekly call, very similar to how we're doing right now, um, but that's separate from the check-ins. And when it comes to nutrition versus fitness, I'm a certified nutritionist. I am not a certified personal trainer. So any advice that I give you on fitness or what to do at the gym is from your friend, Samantha. It is not certified advice. Nice. And that's I have awesome. to say the Thursday check-ins, like, the highlight of my day is your video. <laughs> no, it really is. You know, Mine sometimes too. I get to watch winter. Because <laughs> you know, sometimes there was a couple times like the video took a while to load, and I'm like, the video's not up. Like I'm freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> I know. And I'll be and we stop everything because when she responds, I'm like, pause it. <laughs> I'm like, he my coach responded. He's like, okay. <laughs> And we pause and we watch it and sometimes i rewatch it and i'm like oh wow that was really good and it is true like the more you put into it because sometimes because i could be so blunt i'm just like well blah 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 and yeah. she's like jelly like give me a little more like really what's going on and i'm like well now i have to like actually put, put what's in my mind on paper and so i start doing that and yeah it it like really helps me because i'm like okay that that's some good advice. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And I do, I love that. And I don't know, of course, other coaching programs, but I, that to me just, it keeps, it's like a weekly motivator because mm -hmm. not only the, I love your format of checking in. I don't know how much you want to disclose on that, but the way you have us check in every week, it really gives me that moment, like on a Thursday morning, it's like I set aside time and I'm like, oh, yeah. And I go through all of that and it helps me really evaluate the past week and what all I've gone through. Yeah. And where I, my headspace is, where I am, um, you know, as, as far as keto as well. And then sharing that like with you. And like there have been weeks, you know, where I was just emotionally drained and I was so upset and everything. And it was like, well, I got to check you in. Because hopefully, you know, she can, you know, speak to me so that I don't feel so bad. And and then I would check in. And then when I see your response, I'm like, okay, that it it just helps me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shelly, stop being so hard on yourself. Yeah. And then I can move forward. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why we do check-ins on Thursdays, to be clear, is because not only does it set you up for success for the weekend, which is the time that most people tend to kind of make not so great decisions. But also, um, I, I'll never understand why people weigh in on a Monday, because if you weigh in or check in on a Monday, it's the day after you most likely made all those decisions. So you're probably not going to be at peak result when it comes to your progress chart. And then that's going to play with your head. And again, everything that we do in Diet Destroyer is based on psychology. And nice. if, if you have a better emotional response to your result, I never want people to be results motivated, but I also don't want you having um, an inaccurate result based off of maybe some not so great choices over the weekend. So if we put our check-in days, if you're somebody who only weighs in once a week, if we put that day as far away from the weekend as possible, and then simultaneously getting that check-in, like you said, preps you mentally for the weekend. It's a you know, one, two punch in terms of your psychological, uh, psychological motivation for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish on your journey. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> an another question from wild Turkey Bluff said, what is the best macro calculator? <sighs> I 
Um, I'm gonna have to go back to you on that. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't like macro calculators. Is the is the answer? I think that most macro calculators out there, the problem is that they err on the side of you eating too little food, and so they will because a macro calculator, in order to you know get any legitimacy, is going to have to deliver a result on the macros it gives you, right? So it's always going to err on the side of under eating, which is whenever I see people. Um, on these consultations and they're like, I did X, Y, Z macro calculator. This is the food that it told me to eat. Um, it's always a number that makes me go <gasps> always every single time. And Shelly, you can attest to like the amount of food that I have my clients eating. It's always sometimes a thousand calories more than they're used to. And they're like, there's just no way. And yeah. that's going to go into in depth in the masterclass. If any of you haven't attended my yo-yo dieting masterclass, it goes into why when you're severely under eating all the time, you're actually making it really easy for you to gain weight over time. And if you actually eat more, you make it actively harder for you to gain weight over time. But the macro calculator is never going to think like that because the macro calculator is going to err on the side of you eating too little so that you get a short-term immediate result even if it's at the expense of your overall metabolism over time. So I don't necessarily advise for macro calculators because they're not necessarily taking any of this into account. And sometimes the macros, um, again, going back to like the Dr. Google thing, what approach is that macro calculator using? Is it using a one-to-one -one protein ratio? Is it using like what, whatever it is, it's not taking into account who you are at the end of the day. So it's a good place to start, especially for coming from standard American diet. But if you've been doing this lifestyle for a while, I tend to find that macro calculators are kind of a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. Amen. Um, Jen <laughs> says, what's the best advice for eating two macros? I feel like a failure because I cannot seem to eat two targeted macros. How can a coach help with that? Hmm. That's, that's interesting. Um, well, I have a, I have my clients during certain phases of the program track to macros as well. Um, and what I do, at least as a coach, um, I can't testify to what any other coach can do to help with that is, um, we, I, I always encourage pre-tracking. So if you, if you pre-track like the night before, I view it like playing a game of Tetris. If you can have all the puzzle pieces fall into place, then the next day, all you have to do is just kind of wake up and execute. Now, when you have a coach, what at least my clients can do is when they can't seem to figure out the end of the puzzle, they just reach out to me and they're like, Hey, this is what I've, I've tracked. I'm still kind of falling short what can I do? And then they reach out to me and then I help them finish the puzzle. And after doing that a handful of times, they start to realize that, oh, okay, it's just a matter of a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that, adjusting this, maybe adding this one little thing here. Um, and then it, it doesn't end up being too difficult. But if you're trying to track as you go, especially if you're new to doing it, to tracking to a goal, you're going to find that it's really difficult because at the end of the day, you're going to be left with all these random macros and you're going to be like, ah, well, unless I'm taking a spoon of coconut oil to the face, I don't know what to do with this. Whereas if you just pre-track to the night before, there's room to adjust and take away and add from the picture. So that way you can actually have a completed game. Whereas with Tetris, it's like, it kind of just falls where it falls. But imagine being able to take a box out and put something back in that would make the game much easier. Right? So if you pre-track, it allows you to do that. Nice. Yeah. And I agree, like pre-tracking, especially um, y'all who follow our channel, you see we meal prep so much. Like you'll see when we show what we eat, like we'll have the same meals constantly, but it, it just makes it so easy. So it's like, oh, okay. Like this past week I made chili. So we had chili for dinner every night. That was really easy to pre-track. And then I basically have sausage for lunch and then I have my fatty coffee in the morning. So, but it is one of those things I see sometimes when you're kind of new to it mm -hmm. or new to just basically tracking, you're like, Oh, how do I do this? And I find Samantha has always been really good, especially like when I first started working with her and, you know, changing things up, I was like, Oh, what do I do? Like one of my, and you like came right in you were like, okay, look, cause you're doing high fat. You need to make some, fat bombs so that you have those. So if you're pre-tracking and you're like, oh, I need like 10 more grams of fat, we just go get a fat bomb and add that to the end of your meal. And so she's great about that. I see other diet destroyers who will post questions even during the day and they'll be like, hey, this is what's going on. Or 
Like if you have a special occasion coming up, like we're going on the cruise, y'all, you could put in there, hey, how do I handle on the cruise doing this or that? And she is excellent about looking over like a menu at a restaurant or whatever and saying, hey, looking at this menu, I think your best options would be this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, but sometimes when people show me their logs and they're like, hey, I'm still falling short. It's It doesn't always have to be, okay, add a fat bomb, do this. It can sometimes be, hey, I see you're eating chicken breast. Why don't you change it out for chicken thighs? That's a way to get more fat in without actually changing the meal up. Or, you know, oh, I'm I'm eating non-fat yogurt. Okay, well, why don't we switch to a full fat or 6% meal fat yogurt? Um, these little micro changes so that the meal itself isn't changing, but we're making these adjustments to it inherently when it comes to like either the protein or or what have you. And sometimes having a coach can help illuminate that as well because you, you don't necessarily want to have be like, well, you wouldn't have to put three tablespoons of sour cream on your chicken breast if it wasn't chicken breast. Do you know what I mean? Like these little small yeah. things that we want to think about? Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's the great thing about having Samantha as your coach is because she sees those things and like I'm the type of person, I kind of get lost in the weeds to where I don't always see that. And like when I would send her, oh, well, here's my food thing, then she was able to point out those little things to me and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting way too deep into this and not looking at like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, not, and I thought this is a good question. I have my answer, but I'd like to hear yours as well. Yeah. Well, girl said, is there anything different for someone who doesn't have a gallbladder? Well, you said you had an answer. Yeah. I don't have a gallbladder. I know. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so Cindy, um, I have, a gallbladder. you don't have an answer. I haven't had a gallbladder. They took her answer. <laughs> right? I haven't had a gallbladder in like 11 years. And I personally have not ever had issues. But I think part of whenever I had my gallbladder removed, apparently doctors tell you you're supposed to be low fat. That doctor never told me any of that. So I just kept eating how I always ate. Nobody ever told me, oh, okay, now that you don't have a gallbladder, you need to eliminate fat or you need to do this or that. Nobody ever told me. So I just kept eating basically crappy food. And then when I went keto, I guess because I never did that, oh, I only ate low fat. So when I went keto, it never bothered me to be high fat. And right now I'm the 90% fat. So I see yeah. some people who are like, oh, I don't have a gallbladder. I can't ever eat high fat. And I'm like, I'm eating 90% fat. I don't have no. any problems. Yeah. And to be clear, not every diet destroyer is eating 90% fat. This is something that yeah. we come to for Shelly specifically. Like we said, I coach yeah. everybody very differently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was going to, I was going to say that. I was like, are you sure you don't want to talk first? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, look at Shelly is probably my highest percentage fat client right now. And she doesn't have a gallbladder and she's actually thriving more than she has in recent memory um there's i think the reason why people think that they associate high fat with um the gallbladder is because it also helps with like liver function and all that and we we always associate like fatty liver disease not a, but it's the same mentality of people thinking that fat makes you fat like it's the same kind of misinformation that people it's just all correlation and not causing yeah. and when you actually put it into practice there are tons of anecdotal stories about people who are doing um, high fat diets with no gallbladder and they're absolutely fine. Um, so I, I don't know if it's like hearsay or it's the same thing that when, you know, when you see on a box of Cheerios, it's like heart healthy for lowering cholesterol. And it's like, what? It's like, it's just something that we've been ingrained in without any actual scientific evidence to back up that we need to even do that in the first place. And it's such a blessing that you weren't actually advised to go low fat when that happened to you, because it would have been such a um, step backward for you on your journey. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next question is two parts. So wild Turkey said uh, that they've only been eating fatty meat and egg only diet for four weeks. And here's part of it. Um, 257 non-diabetic has been stuck for four weeks, only eating eggs and fatty meat, no dairy. And they said they haven't lost any weight or inches. Do you have any suggestions? I bet you know what I'm going to say, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, my questions are, do you know how many calories you're eating? Do you know what macros you're eating? Um, the common pitfall with carnivore is that it ends up being a protein to fat ratio that actually isn't um, conducive to people who have a lot of weight to lose. You didn't mention your height or your age, but um, unless you're like a six, nine man, 257 means that you probably have a decent amount of weight to lose. Um, I tend to find that the more weight you need to lose, the more fat on your body, the less protein you actually need to be successful. And if you look at people who do carnivore successfully and have like shredded bodies and are having the body of your dreams and are propo like, um, promoting the carnivore lifestyle, ask yourself, do they have more than 20 to 30 pounds to lose? The answer is probably no. Their metabolic function is going to be different than that of somebody who has 30 plus more pounds to lose your body's going to need to prioritize fat more than protein. And my guess is based off of the foods that you are mentioning, yes, they might be fatty meats, but is the protein level still too high for somebody who has maybe more weight to lose? I need to know how much more weight you're trying to lose um, and a little bit more data than that. But my, my best piece of advice is people who are in the carnivore camp, um, look at the people who are successful and tell me if they're already at their goal weight because my guess is they probably are. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. great for overall health it's not ideal for weight loss yeah i actually gained 30 pounds doing carnivore and then now <laughs> and then when i looked back on it even though i was doing what they said like eat fatty meat i was eating high protein lower fat i was not getting anywhere close to 80 percent fat so i kept gaining weight and even now like I'm aiming for 90% fat, but there's been a couple days, like when we go out to eat or something and I eat more protein and I'm getting less fat, even though it might be like 80% fat, guess what? The scale goes up immediately because my body does not like high fat. But again, that's something we learned personally with me. Whereas if you go with Samantha, you do the free consultation do that and, and really talk it over and figure things out from there because that's something i learned is yeah the high protein approach doesn't work for me and i agree with samantha even some of the people who are carnivore now if you look back how did they lose their weight a lot of them were keto y'all traditional and more for maintenance which I think is a great maintenance strategy, especially for somebody who likes to have limited options and that kind of keeps you sane. Fantastic for maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's not to me a weight loss tool. And that's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, Elaine wanted to know if you have any tips on how to stop using keto sweeteners. Um, not anything that you're going to love um, other than when you're craving sweet, feed it fat. Um, that tends to retrain the brain um, when it comes to cravings. And often um, your, it, your body is like sometimes sends the, op the, the opposing signal and they haven't figured out why necessarily that is. But sometimes when you're craving sweet, you really need salty. Um, and that's like a, it's, uh, an electrolyte imbalance issue or what have you. So Another point is like when you're craving the opposite, maybe try to get the other one. Maybe your glucose is low or something like that. If you, um, which in a keto world means you just need to eat period and <laughs> not eat a bunch of sugar. But um, yeah, I would say when you're starting to crave sweet, give yourself fat, whether it's a fat bomb or something um, like, like a high fat meat or yogurt or something like that. Uh, maybe even a pat of butter. I, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. Um, but go that route. And then see how you feel. And as you start to retrain your brain, that craving will go away. Um, but also when it comes to keto sweeteners, I'm not somebody who is very dogmatic when it comes to that. If you as a bio individual person can respond and see success using certain sweeteners, then by all means, I'm not going to tell you not, I, I'm not a, don't do that. Don't do this type of coach. I'm a, what can we make work for you kind of coach. And for some clients, it's a no-go altogether with sweeteners. For others, they can eat Splenda until the cows come home and they're totally fine. It, it, it really is person to person. And again, that's where data collection comes in. 
Um, so I don't know if you want to get off of keto sweeteners because you know that they make you gain weight, um, or if it's because you've been told that you should, um, maybe it's the thing that you don't even need to worry about. Uh, but the answer to the question long or short is give yourself fat when you're craving sweet. Yeah. And that's one thing I would say with Samantha, she is not like a keto police. She's not like, this is my program. You're going to do what I say. She's very much of, even when it comes to macros and everything, go watch her masterclass, y'all. It's in the description. She's very much a, hey, you figure out where you're at. You figure out where you're going to go. You figure out what works for you. I'm here to support you. So don't feel like you're going to get a drill instructor. You're really getting like I like to say a therapist, like, Hey, I'm here to listen to you and I'm going to help give you the tools that's going to lead you to success. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are tons of people and I myself am one of those people. My body tolerates certain sweeteners totally fine. Um, if I have too much erythritol, sometimes I have a negative effect, but like Splenda, weirdly, I'm totally okay with. Um, and it's through time trial data collection that I figured that out about myself. So I saw one of your comments is like, I, I'm so glad to hear about that because I like sweet, creamy coffee that can serve the family, which is hilarious. Um, you don't necessarily have to give that up. And again, this goes back to Dr. Google again. One person will tell you sweeteners are the devil, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, are they? Because I'm still losing. So what am I, do you know what I'm saying? Um, that's the benefit of having a coach that can like kind of help guide you through that process too. And not just overall get rid of something that, that can make your life harder. Cause again, that's going to make it less sustainable, isn't it? If you're making your life less enjoyable, we want to try and figure out how you can enjoy your life and make it the most pleasurable as possible while still achieving what you want to achieve. That's the goal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then Blue Dub also wants to know, what if, and I think this is a good one, what if weighing, tracking, collecting data is exactly what makes a person feel limited and deprived like we're always on a diet? It's a great question. Um, the reason why my program is called The Diet Destroyer is for two reasons. One is because um, you're going to crush it. Like, it's, I'm going to destroy this diet. Um, but then also, uh, it, also, because I want to destroy that mindset, right? And I think it's a very fine line between feeling in control and feeling like you have agency and letting knowledge be power and then feeling like I have to do this. Thing. I, if I don't do X, Y, and Z, I'm going to fail. I'm a puppet to somebody else telling me what to do. And they're almost like two twins, but that are two different people, but they kind of look similar but how they feel is very different. And I think because so many things don't lead with education, they don't lead with the why. Um, there are people out there like um, Thomas DeLauer, for instance, who leads with education, but he makes it so difficult to understand that it doesn't sink in. So it's not motivating. When you know the why behind what you're doing, approachable and accessible and easy to digest, um, then all of a sudden that inherently helps motivate you. So when you don't feel like it's a chore, then it becomes less of a diet mindset and it starts to feel like you are the ringleader and the master of your own life. It's the same reason why like when you're in the passenger seat on your on a car ride somewhere, you're on the journey and you're going to the same place, but it's a very different feeling than when you're the one driving. Mm -hmm. There's that element of control. There's that element of like, I, I'm, I'm the, the, the driver of this. And there's a, there's a lot more calm in that. Whereas like if somebody, if you're getting in the car and you don't know where you're going, but you're going, there's a lot more anxiety that comes with that. And then that creates a quiet mind, that creates a limited deprived, that creates this and that. Also working with a coach or with somebody or on a program that you found online or like a, a blueprint that was free on Google, whatever. Um, when that's not being tailored to you, then yeah, you're more likely to be deprived because you don't necessarily want to eat X food at that time. So that makes me feel deprived because I'm not getting to pick what I want to eat. So in Diet Destroyer, at least, you get to pick what you eat. So inherently, there's a little bit more freedom in that as well. Yes, there are um, guidelines and suggestions and structure, 
but that inherently ends up making you feel more in control. And again, there are different phases, at least in my program. And the end goal is to have you intuitively eating without tracking, but that needs to be earned. You, if you're even on the journey in the first place, you clearly, your intuition is not right. So we need to retrain it. And just like we said earlier about learning how to ride a bike, if you do it over and over again and collect the data and you know that that's short term, it's an investment in your maintenance phase, which is not tracking. That's why a part of my program is extensive intuitive eating training. Because to me, the whole goal is to get it so that you're not tracking your food. You know how to intuitively eat and you get to keep your result. That's the whole point. But that can't just happen first. Otherwise, you wouldn't need anybody in the first place. You already know what you're doing. So. People don't understand that when it comes to intuitive eating, it's a process. It's the end of a process. So, yeah. And that's what I love about your program is sometimes when you look at other coaching programs, because it is so short term, they're just teaching you, oh, well, this is how you track or this is your macro goals. But what do you do after that? And she has developed it in such a way to where, you will get to that point where you don't need to track and you're not going to revert back to, you know, sometimes I see people, they're like, well, I started tracking. It was just too overwhelming. So I stopped tracking, but now I'm gaining again. Now I'm doing this. She's going to give you the tools you need so that you can eventually not have to track all of that stuff because you will teach yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know that that's like a five ounce filet. And I usually put like, three tablespoons of butter. You don't need to track anymore because you've been eating that way. And she teaches you all of that. And yeah. it's really good to have that next level that I don't see a, a really talked about in the keto sphere. No. What do you do? Yeah, it's true. And I think that um, it's, it's a lot of mindset work too. just understanding that this is a means to the end, which is the thing that you really want. So then again, it's already made easier because you have the, the why motivating why you're doing what you're doing and the education to back the system up, but also um, just knowing that it's all leading towards intuitive eating training and then a maintenance where you don't have to track your food anymore. And you can just keep that result thanks to like reverse dieting and all that we do in the program, which I don't know if your people know about reverse dieting or not, but um, it makes it actively harder for you to gain your weight back if you fall the, the guidelines of that. So it, it becomes, that's, that's what we're working towards, but it, it can't just come off the bat. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. We have like two more questions. I hope we have enough time. Okay. So um, actually two people asked the similar thing here that yeah. basically, what do you think about fasting, periodic fasting? Do you think that suppresses the metabolism like under eating or yo-yo dieting? What's your thoughts on fasting? Okay. Um, my thoughts on fasting are that if you're not doing it for autophagy reasons, I don't see the point. It's basically a way to calorie cut without having to track because you are basically eliminating a meal or what have you. Um, and the, the weight loss or ketosis benefits are kind of a moot point if you're already in the lifestyle. So I find it to be more beneficial for people who are eating standard American diet in a weird way because it puts them in a period of ketosis for however long, but that they wouldn't ordinarily be in. But if you're already going through the lifestyle, you're already in that. So why put yourself on a time limit unless you're going to be um, fasting for 24 hours or more as a means of trying to do cellular renewal, or if you're in like the 48 plus 54 plus hour fasting, like extended fasting route, and you're trying to like up your human growth hormone and all of those other things, misfolded proteins, get rid of, like, you know, that's a whole other goal when it comes to fasting. But if you're fasting as a weight loss technique, it's just another way of calorie cutting. So if you're tracking macros anyway, then why are you fasting? Because you're already eating to a goal anyway. Um, so to me, I feel like it's another one of those things that got put out there that got trendy and people didn't really stop and think about why am I doing this other than somebody told me it was a good idea, but I never really mm -hmm. understood if it applied to me or not. And we just started doing it and everybody's talking about fasting, 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 not realizing that the thing that makes fasting good for you is a, a, a ketosis benefit, which if you're already in the lifestyle, you're, you already have, or the autophagy benefit of like cleaning out all the dead cells in your body. Um, 
which only happens if you're fasting for over 24 hours, which most people are not. So that's kind of where I sit on that. Yeah. And when I came to you, I told you how I mean, my hormones not only do carnivore, but my hormones uh, were out of whack, even being a carnivore. But it really started because I did because, again, I was like, oh, autophagy. Oh, you got to fast. you got to do these extended fasts. So I was fasting for six days. I fasted. It messed up my hormones so bad. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if it, it, you know, certain, certain people, maybe it works well for and then when I went to Samantha, I was like, oh, but, you know, everybody says you got to do extended fasting. You got to do 16, 8 or, you know, whatever the different times are. And I have found I flourish better actually eating at least two times a day. Plus, I have a fatty coffee in the morning, which can be considered a meal. So technically, you know, I'm having like three meals a day, but I do better on that. Mm -hmm. He always eats three meals a day. When he, at one point, because again, I was like, oh, fasting, that's what you do. <laughs> he did not do well. And it was not conducive to his health doing only two meals or one meal a day. Mm -hmm. It was not beneficial for him. He does, he does a lot better having three consistent meals every day. There you go. Oh, sure. <laughs> You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're making your life harder or less pleasurable because, again, that's not going to be sustainable. So even if for some reason it happened to work, um, which I don't see it happening anyway, um, but if it did, it's it's going to be short term if it's not something that, that comes intuitively to you. And again, like I said, I, I don't think that the math maths, but <laughs> that's that's just where I sit. Um, one final question because I know yeah. you have to go. Um this was actually on Instagram and I know you have posted in your reels before. So I thought this would be a good one. Okay. The person said they want to know your thoughts on basically keto fads. What do you think of PSMF fasting? OMAD, BBB and E all the different, you know, keto, the basically keto fads that we hear. Okay. Yeah. It's hard because it's not on the screen. So I have to I know. Said. Um, well, protein sparing modified fast, again, I think is something that doesn't work if you have a lot of weight to lose. Um, it's also so incredibly restrictive. And again, that it's like how this goes for all of those things that you mentioned. If it's something you only plan to do for a short period of time, I'm not for it because it that's then a diet mindset. That's something that if you're only planning on doing it for the short term, what happens when it's over? What are you going to do after that? You're more most likely going to go back to whatever weight you were at before. And especially with something like, for example, protein sparing modified fast, um, the, the massive calorie deprivation on those days is going to play a role in down-regulating your metabolism over time which is then going to make you have higher cravings over time, which is then going to make you rebound like crazy, which then if you even go even a hair over your already lowered basal metabolic rate, you're going to start gaining weight at a much lower calorie threshold because you did that. So even if it works in the short term, you're going to find that over time, this is why you hear this all the time. Most diets fail. You end up gaining all the weight back you lost and then some, they don't, they don't explain. And again, this is all of what the masterclass is about. But when you down-regulate your metabolism by doing these extreme things, you make it easier for you to gain weight over time. And not only that, your body is going to send you signals to save itself from death because you're, <laughs> you're putting yourself in a starvation mode. I put that in quotes that your body is going to go, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. And it's going to become actively harder for you every single day to go, shh, shh to that voice you're eventually going to not say shush you're just you're not going to be able to override that feeling and you're going to you've already down regulated your metabolism now so when you finally eat what you used to eat now that, that's too much whereas before you did this it was probably fine and you're going well i'm just going back to what i was doing before that i was maintaining my weight here but you did this thing now that down regulated your metabolism so now it's all shot to hell for sorry to, to speak so crassly but like that's the situation 
And so what reverse dieting does, which is what the free masterclass is about, it talks about how you can undo a lot of that metabolic damage. And that's what we do a lot in the program, um, because that tends to be the pitfall of a lot of these things that you mentioned. Um, at the end of the day, whatever the approach is, um, protein spray modified fast, BBBE, um, they're all things that nobody ever sets out to do forever. And if it's not something that you can do forever, and also it's something that promotes under eating, not only will you be down regulating your metabolism, but it's going to be a short term gain slash loss, however you want to view it verbally. <laughs> like it's, it's, a, it's a win, short term win, um, but it's, it's not going to be forever. So then why would you put yourself through something so difficult just to have the outcome be short term? It's no different than me knocking on your doorstep, publisher's clearinghouse and being like, congratulations, you just won a million dollars. And you're like, oh, okay, great. I'm so excited to have this million dollars. And I go, enjoy it. One month from now, I'm going to come back and collect that million dollars. But in the meantime, have a blast with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes valueless when you know that you have to give it back at the end. So mm -hmm. how exciting is it to lose 20 pounds in a month when you know you're gonna gain 25 the two months later? Mm -hmm. right. Yes, thank you. Cause I know you you do talk about, you know, these, I call them keto fads, yeah. um, you know, that, that spring up. And it seems like, I guess maybe, I don't know, it's longer I've been keto or just because keto is becoming more and more popular there's more and more people trying to, well, now here's this new way to do keto uh, for like 30 days. And it's always like a 30 day or a 60 day. And it's like, yeah. but I don't want to do something that's only going to be 30 days. Like I need to know I'm, you know, I'm in my forties. I need to know how I'm going to eat and survive and be healthy for the rest of my life. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, again, that goes back to the sort of ADD mindset when it comes to the weight loss space and everything being so short term oriented. We've trained ourselves to think, well, if it's short term, then I know I can continue with it for that period of time. All I have to do is 30 more days. All I have to do is one more week. All I have to do is whatever it is. And then the only thing that gets us through is knowing that it will be over soon. Why would you put yourself in that situation? that is destined to have it all come back. I mean, I'm looking at your chat right now and it's people who've tried all these different things and then they're like, yeah, it worked, but then what? You, you gain it back because you're putting your body in a metabolic state that makes it actively easier for you to gain weight after it. So who cares if it worked, if it doesn't work at the end? Do you know what I mean? So instead, okay. focus on the long-term strategy. And I spent so much of my coaching time prior to Diet Destroyer having to fight against this short-term mindset because it's so attractive in the beginning, you know, Oh, only eight weeks, only 30 days, only this. But at the end of the day, that's, that's not actually what's best for you. And instead, if you say there's no limit on this, we're going to try and create a lifestyle. We're going to make the lifestyle the priority. Then it's a complete shift in how you function and you end up actually being able to keep your result. Even if it takes a little bit longer over time, I much rather have a thousand dollars in my pocket than a million dollars that I have to give back. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Perfectly said, as always. <laughs> um, because you know, it it's the long term I want. I don't want to drop 20 pounds and then gain it back. I mean, I've done that my whole freaking life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, thank you so much, Samantha. This has been so oh, much fun tonight. My pleasure. Um, I, I want to um, point people to um, the free masterclass also. And just if you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it. I don't hold anything back in there. Um, it, I literally tell you everything you need to do in order to do the reverse diet so that you don't have to be one of those people who does the, you know, has suffered from trying one of these things. And then you've suffered from the fallout, which is you know, metabolic uh, down regulation. We don't, we don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so I definitely point you that way. Also, um, you can follow me on YouTube, which is at Samantha Souza official. Um, my Instagram is Samantha Souza official. Obviously you can watch all of the testimonials on dietdestroyer.com. Um, and you can investigate the program a little bit there. And you can also book a free consultation with me there. If it's something that you are curious about, if you want to get some free advice or insight into why maybe something that you're trying is not working, you can definitely um, schedule that on there as well for free. 
Yes. And definitely do it, y'all. It's yeah. always worth. And all of your questions were so awesome tonight. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. And just go do her masterclass, sign up for a consultation and go from there. I think that's a good step. I mean, it, it's not a commitment. You could just talk and, and figure it out from there. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally free. You honestly have nothing to lose. And, and I also learn something from every consultation as well. You know, there's new things that pop up, new struggles that people have. And um, I, I always get something out of them too. So it's never a waste of time, like I like to say. Um, and you can also DM me on Instagram too, if that's something that's more in your wheelhouse, if you're an Instagram person, um, or if you want like other information. I have so many videos on YouTube. It's silly. Um, somebody mentioned that they followed Thomas DeLauer because they liked his shop shopping in the stores videos. I have a whole series of those. So if you like um, I go through the aisles and go through the foods and things like that. Um, and, and it's coming from my perspective that is not bought and paid for. Um, <laughs> if, if you're into that, if you're into that. Um, I have those two on my YouTube channel, which is the same, just at Samantha, who's uh, official everywhere. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Oh, well, thank you so much again, Samantha. This is awesome that you gave your time tonight and answered yeah. so many wonderful questions. Yeah, maybe we can do it again sometime. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you so much. Have You're a great welcome. weekend. Have a great rest of the life. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I'm breathing. Thank you all so much. Of course, we're still here, you know, because we can't we can't end uh alive this early I mean, eight o'clock um y'all thank you so so much i saw that um oh look everyday opportunity that's he's friend sent us a five dollar super oh, chat that you, was brother. awesome he had to run but thank y'all i know i skipped a lot of comments y'all but um thank you everybody them. yeah you can always repost them but thank you all so much y'all were amazing tonight like the hungry horde represented yes, right yes yes y'all were awesome thank you thank you so much because this interview with samantha would not have been as wonderful as it was without y'all so thank you and thank you for the emailed questions and instagram we just so many great questions and um not enough time but i hope generally she answered everything i feel like we did a pretty good scope God, of yeah of everything but again just you know if you want to i i'm always like hey it's free why not go register for her master class like when i watched it i thought it had a lot of great information in there so if you still have a few questions you could always watch that um but yeah thank you guys y'all are so awesome what did you think that was awesome yeah i didn't want to talk too much and interrupt and everything oh you did well no, i know i i kind of like bogart the situation that's fine. Don't I? Approach. that's fine but thank you all oh awesome shauna just shared uh the link to uh samantha's youtube so yeah she has and she has really good recipes on there too mm -hmm. And, and I'll even watch her channel without Shelly sometimes too. <laughs> she yeah. does uh, shorts a lot too. Yeah, she does a lot of shorts and she does They're pretty uh, entertaining. Yeah, and she does some good recipe videos that I've liked. And again, they're a lot shorter than our recipe videos. So that's probably good. She helped us on the last cruise too with the dessert yes. options. Yeah, so that was really good. Um, well, it helped too because, like I said, she actually worked for. Uh, uh, Royal, Royal Caribbean. Yeah. So, like, she was like, you know, do the cheese plate, or they usually have like berries, so you can always get berries as a dessert. So, yeah, lots of great information. I feel like I've definitely got more value than I ever paid monetarily, honestly. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm just so happy, y'all. I've been like, look, I still feel like kind of nervous. Um, so I'll read through some comments and then I think the Instapot did go off. Yeah, it's at 28 minutes. Has been so seen. it's still natural releasing then, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, and I still so, want a hot ride because I'm getting hungry. Okay, that's fine to do I'm it. Flip the valve and give me another drink. Yeah, and then I'd like my drink and this feels like it's low again. Ah, yeah. oh, there we go. 
All right, Jackie said she's not scared of calories. She's eaten as much as 4,000 in a day, but most days I only average 1,400 to 1,800, and I usually get hungry like once a day. Can't figure out how to up my average. I mean, Jackie, I would say that. I'm sure you probably wanted to ask the coach this. Um, oh, I see Rocky Mountain Girl. Good night. All right. Um, and I think there was a, oh, Debbie left. Oh, good night, y'all. Thank y'all who tuned in. That was awesome that you tuned in for this. We really, really appreciate it, like, a lot, y'all. Um, oh, nice. Look, it's done. Oh, good. But, yeah, I would say using fat. What I noticed, because I was getting in the same situation, even though I kind of pre-track, you know, just to make sure I get 90%. I was noticing I was only eating around 1,700 calories. And guess what? The scale stopped moving. And I was like, okay, what's going on? You know, because it was, you know, steadily declining. I'm like, why is it just stopped? And then it, I upped it um, back up and, you know, eating more. And basically was just adding a couple more um, tablespoons to my morning coffee adding another tablespoon of mayo to my meal, things like that, just to up it more. And I started feeling, of course, a little bit better, but then it was like, okay, yeah, that's why some mornings I was waking up starving because I was only eating like 1,700 calories. Like, no, it just wasn't working. So that's my my advice on that as well. Um Jamie said, Shauna kept talking about the keto chow fudge. She loves her keto chow fudge. So I whipped some up today. I don't usually use fat bombs, so looking forward to trying it. Oh, that's awesome. Jackie said, I think butter is the only fat bomb I can have right now. Uh, well, probably if you're doing the BB and E, probably is just butter. Uh, Jamie said, I did have to run to the bathroom before the meal is finished. Uh, issues after I got my gallbladder removed. I just had to increase the fat slowly and keep to an eating schedule to help my liver release bile. And I think so. My thing is, even though, um, you appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. I see Terra Bear said, if you appreciate this opportunity, please hit the thumbs up button. Yes, thank you so much for doing that because. Who knows? Maybe we'll, I know Radical Geek, I don't know if she's still on. She's probably in bed. But we definitely plan to do like a live cook along with her, um, you know, eventually. So that'll be fun. Now now I know how it all works in StreamYard. But what I was saying about my gallbladder, so when I got it out, the doctors never told me about health. But at the same time, I also had um, ulcerative colitis or, you know, Crohn's ulcerative colitis. They're very similar. They actually thought I had Crohn's at first. But anyways, what I noticed with that is I was already going to the restroom 10, 12 times a day. So after I had it, my uh, gallbladder removed, things just didn't change. It was the same. I was still going 10, 12 times a day and I was still miserable. So I couldn't tell the difference, but I what i just splashed oh but i can tell you that um since i have been like the higher fat like the first day yeah y'all it did kind of like my body was like woo but then after that my body like has adjusted and everything is back to normal that's probably too much information Ooh, this is what the whole thing looks like up a little more Ooh, that looks good. You're gonna have to carve some off. Yeah, it was. I thought shred. it was no. It oh. needs to cook a little longer. That's why I was telling you 95 minutes. Well, let me see two forks. Let's see. Jennifer said after my gallbladder was removed, I had bile acid malabsorption. That was a huge trigger, but I just had to transition slower for the body to handle that. I haven't taken meds for my BAM in months. That's awesome. awesome. And Jamie said, Yep, when I was eating uh carnivore. I was at less than 60% fat. I favor lean meats. Oh, well, and some people would probably argue with me on this, but yeah, it did not. Oh, well, look, some of it is shredding. We'll just take a knife to it then. That's fine. We can slice it. It'll be like having a roast. 
Yeah. It is a pot roast. Oops. If the plate don't move everywhere. Yeah, some of it is shredding. Oh, okay. Just slice it off then. That's fine. It'll still eat. Yeah. You want some tongs or? I'll just use these two small forks. Oh, yeah. It's cutting like really easy. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much you're wanting. And then I'll need some <laughs> mayo. Three or four. You want mayo or I'm just going to have sour cream. Yeah. And then you're supposed to pour some of the. That's what I was fixing to do next. I was going to ladle. Okay. To get some of the juicies. Yeah. Give me the juicies. Um, so, in the research, I would say, is they, there's a thing, and I was reading up on it, um, because even in the zero carb life or zero, zero in on health, I think is who it is. Uh, by Dana. So Dana has been a carnivore, I think like 14 or 15 years. And while well, I was doing, I've got a fork. Okay. And then this chunk could go back. Okay. And then that one, that should be plenty for you, right? Yeah. What about for you? Just that, this little bit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyways, so there's a thing. So some people call it protein poisoning and some people were saying, well, it's really animal fat deficiency. So depending on how you want to term that, that basically if you're eating more than 35% protein, then that means your body is not getting enough fat and therefore you'll eventually have issues like diarrhea, uh, tiredness, you know, all these different things, headaches and so forth, because you're simply not giving your body enough fat for it to survive and you're giving it too much protein so that's why i have said before you need to be making sure you're getting a minimum of 65 percent fat at least long term or i mean one day you're a little bit lower but the next day you're a little bit higher as long as it averages out to at least that but i really feel like and what i've seen is if you're getting less than that you're probably going to end up Ha starting to see some issues from that. My thoughts. Uh, Susie said, my weight loss uh, was with keto. I gained muscle mass with cardboard. That's awesome. Uh, that's what I've seen a lot of people, like if you could get to your goal weight or within 10, 20 pounds, like my coach said, and then you go to carnivore. Yeah, it's a great way to build that muscle up and like for some people, like I know Kelly Hogan, yeah, she needs to do that because eating carbohydrates or vegetables are very triggering for her. You know what? I'm going to do this and then. Um, oh, Jonna whoops. said bump the that camera. she had the opposite. And Jennifer said, sweeteners stall you out. And I liked what my coach said about sweeteners. Here, I'll take one of those. Um, what my coach said about the sweeteners that, you know, if you're having issues with sweeteners or if you're feeling like sweeteners are, you know, doing certain things like stalling you out or something, try upping or changing the sweeteners for more of a fat and kind of retraining your body into not being so dependent on something sweet. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. Jamie said, oh, I like the sound of that. Everyone says to drop the sweeteners, but oh yeah, she even read that comment of yours. Yeah. And that's something I've learned too. Cause I've always been like, oh, I don't want to have sweeteners. And I've noticed that like when I have a sweetener, like if I add the better stevia to my heavy cream, I'm not having a reaction to that. So I forgot we even uh, had this coleslaw. Jo oh, Do you gosh. want any or no? No. Uh, Jonna said, it's not easy. I could say that. Well, and that's what we're here for. Uh, Renee said, I like my liquid stevia for my coffee. And that's really the only thing I have that is sweet. That's awesome. And Lane said, it makes you feel hungry. Yeah. And Jonna said, yeah, that's sometimes I've noticed that too, that if I'm having something like, especially if it's like the end of the day, mm -hmm. if I'm having 
a lot of sweetness, then all of a sudden I like want um, more. And it's like, why, why are you wanting more? Like you've, you've had a lot, but it's like that sweet kind of triggers it. Right. You want this one? No, nah, I'm good. Okay. You're not having any pepperoncinis? I took some. They're oh, on my you plate did? right now. I didn't see any on your plate. Here, I'm going to... Uh, give me a couple. There you go. There you go. There. All right. There we go. I guess that we should have almost put this in a bowl, right? Yeah, well. We'll do that All later. All right. Is that okay? Because um, I want to get it to all. Yeah, that, that looks good. Perfect. Uh, Sana said, I learned that I need to incorporate my sweet tea with brunch. Oh. Yeah, and sometimes that helps not to have something sweet outside of a meal. Uh, right family's here. Hey, right family. I know I'm like really, really behind in some comments, but we'll get caught up. Jackie said, I think stevia sucralose are the ones I worry about the least. Aspartame, maltitol, maltodextrins are the ones I avoid. Um, Amen. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Like, usually if I see maltitol, I'm like, what's the point? You might as well have real sugar. Any kind of malt, right? Uh-huh, and the same with maltodextrin. And even I... That's why we don't eat the Johnsonville brats. As dextrose. But anyways, what I was going to say is um, I even find that sometimes um, the, what is, the soluble corn fiber gives me the same thing as like maltodextrin. So I really try to limit or avoid if I see soluble corn fiber. Now, once in a while, like when we go to KetoCon, for example, I'm going to get a lot of free stuff at KetoCon. I know some of the products do use soluble corn fiber, but guess what? I'll have like that one treat or whatever, but I'm not going to buy a box of it to keep around, right? right? Because I feel like that then is going to trigger me more. And I do know when I have stuff that has soluble corn fiber, every time I test my blood sugar, it does go up. But everybody's different. Um, okay, let's see here. Jack said, according to Bart K, Thomas DeLauer shouldn't be listened to. And a lot of his science talk is wrong. Um, and then, uh, so I, was, I agree about Thomas Starr. Too much scientific jargon that goes over the head. Mm, to me, he just sounds like a used car salesman. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to hang yeah. on anybody. Oh, look, Miriam stopped by. Hey. Oh, you're still here. Um, I think you just have to find who you enjoy listening to and who you feel like motivates you, right? We're all different. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, he's got what a million or so uh subscribers and stuff so there's obviously people right? <laughs> obviously there are people who like him i mean there are people that we don't particularly like um i see other people that are like oh i like such and such that have you know quite a bit of followers and i'm gonna be honest i we don't watch like i might have watched them when we first started keto four years ago but then we were like okay, no, I don't really like this or that about, you know, certain people. Like, I don't like when I see a man over talking his partner, that kind of gets to me. So when I've noticed that, then I'm just like, okay, we're not going to watch them anymore. But that's fine. Every Some people absolutely love them. That's it. You find out who encourages you. Oops and motivates you and makes you feel good and how they talk to you. Like we love Dr. Barry's format. Like yes. when we first found Dr. Barry, what endeared me to him is because he talked to me in the same language in the same accent that I'm used to. So it felt more like a friend, right? Whereas um, uh, one of my other friends, was talking to me about his gout problem and I referred him to Dr. Barry and he was totally turned off by him because he didn't like that. Hey, I'm a doctor and blah, blah, blah. You know how Dr. Barry talks. He didn't find that appealing to him. So you find what is appealing to you and just follow them. Um, oh my gosh. What's up? 
Tur Wild Turkey Bluff just sent a $10 super oh, wow. chat. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I hope that um, you got some great answers tonight and you feel better with uh, how, you, you know, how you're doing on your journey and um, that it was, you know, good, um, good talks tonight. I don't know. I can't I even talk anymore. Though. Huh? To help that shred a little more, I'm going to put it back on to cook a little longer. While we're yeah. just sitting here, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, okay, Renee said, Thomas DeLauer is one of the first ones that drew me in because I'm a science nerd, so it was appealing. And, you know, again, we watched him. From the beginning, yeah. From the beginning, too. I mean, there was a lot of people we watched at the beginning. A lot of them aren't even of, keto now. It's crazy. Right. Or like, you know, even Dr. Berg at the beginning. You know, these big names you hear about. You start watching them, and it does help you kind of get your footing, and then you kind of grow from there. That's how I look at it. Um, oh, I love that little sticker. She's, I don't know why it won't show in StreamYard, but I'll show Heath the little sticker. Look, when she sent the super chat, look at the sticker. Isn't that cute? That is. I love that. Thank you. That's so nice. You know what, though? I told said, you I want to I got to the point. Intuitive eating worked well. A new medication messed with my balance. Oh, no, Jennifer. Well, you know you can get back there because you did it. Now it's just, you know, the medication sometimes. Jackie said, uh, DeLauer's in it for the money, so he caters to all sides. Uh, I can't blame him that. I can't fault anybody for wanting money. Right. And that's generally Heat's opinion. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, they just want it for the money. And it's like, well, who doesn't want money? <laughs> right. Who doesn't want money? And he's obviously getting it, right? Um, he's doing something right. But, and I feel like in some ways, some of these really bigger names that most of us probably don't really care for nowadays, but think we all kind of went there first. So if it helps somebody start keto, Oh, nice. If it helps somebody start keto and start on their journey to better health, then that's great that they have somebody out there that is like that, that will help somebody make those first steps. Uh, Jennifer said, fasting is all about autophagy. Yes, I love that. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt her and say that I fast every day. And that's why the first meal is breakfast. That's true. Jonna said, Dr. Barry, Dr. Eric Westman are my go-to. Yes, I, I don't know why I keep forgetting. Yeah, Dr. Westman, another one, I think he has great information. He's going to be on the low-carb cruise. Nice. So I'm excited to hear him talk in person. Um, so we'll um, see how that goes, right? Um, let's see. Back and forth. I sat on my tail. Oh, Shauna said, thank you. I always felt those keto offshoots were not good for me personally. My brain reads diet. My emotions say you have failed at every diet. And that's something too. That I guess that's probably my thing too is when I hear these is I'm like, look, I don't want something short term. I want something for life. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just done with dieting. Uh, Lisa said, PSMF was so hard. I had headaches. It was so sleepy. I did lose weight, but when I stopped, it came back. Uh-huh. And you know what's kind of sad about that um, is I've actually had people that we met like strangers. And when we tell them, you know, well, hey, you know, we don't want the bread. We don't want this. Oh, are you doing keto? And they would say, oh, I did keto, um, you know, to lose weight. And then I gained it back when I went off. And sometimes I feel like that's that's my thing is when people only tout about weight loss, then it just attracts people who only look at keto as a short-term weight loss diet. Mm -hmm. And that's why if we could just get it out there that, hey, it, keto is a lifestyle. This is how you should properly eat, like Dr. Barry says, the proper human diet for life. This isn't some short-term thing. Mm -hmm. And so to kind of get away from the short-term, you know, sometimes like I feel like, um, my opinion, I feel like sometimes people who 
um, like create these keto sh offshoots, right? Like they're doing it just to have more content. And they're like, oh, well, now if I could tell people, hey, you only have to do this. And then, you know, people will start doing this because that's going to get me more views. That's going to sell me another book because now people are going to have to buy my book that tells them how to do this. It's like, but prop traditional keto works. Right, family said, I'm really careful with who we watch. Some of the big wigs have went off their kilter and have forgotten why we are here. I agree, right, family. I totally agree. And I think you do have to, um, you know, kind of, I think it kind of goes back to find who you enjoy watching. Yeah. That you just speaks because, to you. Right. Just because a channel is about keto doesn't mean you have to watch every single keto channel. Watch to the ones that motivate, inspire you, make you feel good about yourself so that you continue on what you're doing. So you continue on your path of being healthy. Um, oh, y'all are so nice about the interview. Uh -huh. I'm just so happy. Uh, John has said, I'm doing it now. Week two, I have tons of energy and bones don't hurt. Wow. It's not difficult. My plan is three days per week. Okay. Well, I mean, if that feels good for you, again, that's why I think with um, Samantha, she's really good about figuring out what works for you. So sometimes I've seen, you know, like before I got Samantha, I was looking at some other possible coaches and it was very much a, well, here, I'm going to give you this plan. Go use my macro calculator so you'll figure out your macros and then we're going to do this. And it felt very much a one size fits all and not really like somebody who's there to actually coach me on an individual basis versus somebody who's like, ooh, if I could just do this six week class and I get, you know, 200 people signed up. It's like, they're just in it to do a quick six week program. Six um, weeks from now, they're having a new class. Right. Oh, y'all are so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cece said, I love the lifestyle approach supports our long term health. Yes. Joe Dale said, what kinds of fats to eat besides butter? I don't like butter. Well, I eat for my fats in the mor my morning coffee. I put coconut oil. Um, I and that's uh, a great source. She yeah. had me buy another one of these today for. Her. Yes, so I use coconut and oil a lot. You see, she keeps it right there on her coffee station. She adds this to her coffee every morning. But that's a great source of fat. Without fail. Yes, mayo. So I use mayo a lot because. To me, mayo is very versatile. You can either have mayo plain and just add it like I did, or you can put your spices in it. Right, family? They added like some spices into it. That changes it up. Mayo is a great base for a dip. So you can add like mayo and a little bit of sour cream and make a wonderful dip with it. With you some want some seasoning. really good zip to it. We have a recipe for her where she makes her harissa mayo. Yes. Um, so I feel like. Damn it, not in a while. I, I know. Um, so mayo is another great fat um, source. Um, I'm trying to think here. Sour cream. Um, yeah, sour cream. Now, sour cream does have a little bit like one mm -hmm. protein to five fat. So sour cream is a good option. Um, also, if you're into nut butter, so pecan butter, mm -hmm. like for us, or you can do peanut or almond butter, those are good sources of fat. Another way is use the fat that is in your meat. So, for example, and you'll see this in my Warden Report, I make sausage almost every day for lunch with when you're cooking your sausage, like I usually cook it in a skillet, you're going to have some of that sausage fat in your pan. I don't get rid of that. I pour that back over my sausage and make sure I'm getting all of that fat. It makes so, me cry because I like doing scrambled eggs and her grease, and she's using it now. No, right. So bacon fat, you know, cook with your bacon fat. Make sure you're adding those fats back in. 
you could buy beef tallow <laughs> and just cook in good fats like that and keep the fats in there you know don't get rid of like, like it just makes me cry when i see people like cook um you know uh hamburger meat 80 20 and then they drain off the fat no keep the fat in there so like when i had chili this week it wasn't just meat like i would ladle just the um juices, juices the fats and ladle that on top of the meat as well. So those are good ways to incorporate it. Um, um, it's all natural fat too. Yes. And then I would say even things like eating higher fat uh, meat and then like uh, cream cheese and cheeses in general are generally got some good fats in them. You just have to read the labels and see. I hope that was a good answer. Or it helped you. That's why it makes me mad when you buy all these blocks of cheeses, or even like the cheese, the cheese sticks I was eating earlier. They're every single one of you find it all say low fat, low fat, low fat. Because that's the, the sad mentality. I know. So what makes it really hard to find real cheese. Well, and I, and again, it's just changing people's perception mm -hmm. on fat. Uh, Mary's here. Hey, Mary. Howdy, howdy. She said keto every day, even on your birthday or on a Tuesday or when you're stalled or when you're not stalled keto every day amen and mary just celebrated five years of keto i believe it was That's five. awesome um but yeah exactly and i feel like that's why i wanted my coach on here is because i know sometimes we have struggles and i think it's really good in that aspect to have a good coach who can help you because you know keto is healthy for you right you know you feel good on keto and sometimes you just need that kind of reminder because sometimes again going back to the weight loss me <coughs> mentality is sometimes we get so focused on oh weight loss weight loss weight loss and then you're like oh, i've been stalled for four weeks right or i've been stalled for two months yeah i if if that's all we focus on that could get you to that point where you're like, why am I doing keto? And like, wasn't it nurse Cindy said she was stalled for a year, but she didn't stop keto. Like a year and a half. Yeah. But, and I've gotten to that point sometimes with my coach, cause I was still in that weight loss mentality mentality. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm just not, um, you know, losing weight. And, um, And she was like, she goes, okay, Shelly, so you're mad, but what's the alternative? So yes, when we get angry or disappointed, what is the alternative? Do you want to go back to feeling like BS and back on medications and just back eating all that stuff? Like, do we want to go back to that? And I was like, look, I'm just a complaint. And no, I don't want to go off of being keto because I know that's good for my health. It reversed my diabetes. I don't want to go back to being a diabetic. So it's like, I'm just frustrated. And she's like, yeah, so stop the diet mentality. Stop focusing on that. Focus on your health and what's happening. And sometimes we need that reminder. And if I didn't have a coach... I wouldn't have that reminder to tell me, oh, I would just be sitting there crying about, well, I don't know what's going on. Well, now I have a coach so we could talk it through and figure out what's going on, mm -hmm. what's happening, what's working, what is it working, and just kind of fine tune things. Um, Renee said, Shelly, how do people contact Samantha and set up a consult? In the description, in the show notes, in the show notes is the link to her master class that you can register for. And then from there, you'll be able to then set up that consultation with her. I think y'all did share the links as well. Oh, wow. Shauna already signed up for the master oh, class. Wow. That Thank is you. so good. Awesome sauce. Jamie said, enjoy this more than I expected. Nice. We'll check out the master class. Like I said, she's not my coach, but I still eavesdrop on her. <laughs> she seems seemed to really enjoy that, too. Well, and I'm so glad that you enjoyed this so much. Y'all, um, 
That's make that just really yeah makes me feel so good. Because, I really yeah, this might sound uh -huh. egotistical or silly or whatever, but it seems like just having her on kind of legitimized my channel. <laughs> Well, it made me feel like so good because I was so nervous and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope I do a good job. I, you know, because I like Samantha so much. I just wanted y'all to see like what I see. Right. Oh, thank you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. That was really good. I guess you swallowed it whole. While Turkey also enrolled in the master class. Nice. I'm so happy when is for y'all. When is that going to happen? Is like everybody going to be doing it all at once together? I mean, how does that work? Um, I, 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 I haven't looked into it. It's a link, and then I think it's like it's timed where then you go through oh, it. Oh, okay. It's been a while since I did it. Yeah. And Shelly King gave hearts. And see, Shelly's so awesome. Y'all could ask her, too. Um. Oh, and Renee said she's going to follow Samantha, too. Yeah, I like her channel. God, I said hi, I'm a follower. And Zada said, thanks for keeping it real, Samantha. Subscribing. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, and then uh, Purple Love and Nana, here it is. She said the master class started in five minutes. Oh, good. Wow. I hope you all love it. Uh, TQ Cat said, 14 hours more to go on the live. <laughs> that's awesome. Y'all are so neat. Wow. Oh, Kim missed it. Oh, good. Shauna posted it. Yeah, y'all go give her a uh, link. Uh, uh, a a follow and yeah she's got good i stuff really up like there. her short she puts on youtube those are because she usually does those uh, those co co comedic ones too yeah she does she's so funny. hilarious but like um if y'all have been watching me you know i did a fat fast and she actually has on her channel like how she does a fat fast so you can go over there and even learn about that oh Lori said she's gonna be contacting her awesome Patty, Patty said, excellent interview. Y'all were so nice. And Sana said, uh, Shelly and Heath, you both can now take a big exhale. All right. Y'all did great. Oh, thank, thank you. you, guys. Cindy said, I got a scoot. I'll have to watch the replay. Good night, night. Cindy. I think I said good night earlier. Oh, well. You can have two good nights. Tweety Tiki Cat said, I just described her channel. I really like and her and love to learn new things. Right. Aw. And she's so fun. Um, and I like that, you know, like she's been was on Royal Caribbean for six years because she really gave me some good insights on the Royal and some you know, uh, helpful tips. Hit tips. Yeah. Yes. Jen said, Shelly, you did great. Oh, thank you guys. Great job, y'all. Thank you for having her on. That was great. And Tara Bear said, if you appreciate it, give it. Oh, thank you guys. That's so nice. I was like so nervous. I, I was like practicing all day. And I think I even dreamed about it. Like <laughs> I just wanted to do like. I do was, her justice too. Yes. That was the main thing. Yeah. I was like, I, I, I want to come across so that she knows how much I appreciate and love her. So thank you all for letting me know that that happened. Jackie said, I've been using my coffee to get in more fat, about two, three tablespoons this past week. That's awesome, Jackie. That's to me, and that's me, my opinion. I feel like that's the easiest way to up my fat is in my coffee, having that uh, butter. Like some days I've been doing the Kerrygold butter. Other days I've been doing the coconut oil. And to me, that's just such an easy, you should just lower your chair really that's what i feel like that to me is just the easiest way to really get the fat in and what i like about it this is what i've noticed when i start my day with just a basically only having fat just butter coffee just pure fat i feel like i have much more mental clarity and energy in the morning like if i have like breakfast like tomorrow we're going to be uh, making a new uh video and it's a breakfast dish <laughs> yeah it's a breakfast dish in the morning i know if i eat like protein and fat and maybe even some carbs i still feel good but it's not as sh like my mind isn't as sharp i don't know how else to explain it's just like this crystal clarity 
Huh? Sluggish? I'm not sluggish. It just gives me this, this crystalness in the morning, which, you know, like with my job, like sometimes I really mm -hmm. need to have that 100% focus. Well, especially my <laughs> job. Yeah. Uh, Shelly said, thank you, Shelly, for having her come on tonight. Her coaching is unique and genuine, and I love how she tailors the program to your needs and doesn't cookie cutter to make everyone do the same. That's exactly how I feel. Thank you for coming in, Shelly. Thank you. That was so awesome. Reichwin said, fat bombs are things you can make to keep in the freezer when you need a bite of something. I use coconut oil instead of butter sometimes and add stevia for friendly fur. Look up Keto Connect. Yeah, and I think also um, she, Samantha, even has a couple fat bomb recipes on her YouTube channel. Um, so she's got those. But yeah, fat bombs are easy. I've made them before and just keep them in the freezer because, again, if you're like, oh, I need... You know, we ended up going out to eat and I didn't get enough fat. Okay, I could take a, a fat bomb. Uh, Wild Turkey Boy said, do you check blood ketones, Shelly? Not anymore. When I first started keto, I did. Like, I had the Keto Mojo and I would check my blood ketones. Um, I feel like at this point, I've been doing this now for, well, it'll be four years on. Well, I thought it was the 14th. You said it's the 21st? Well. I think I'd have to check my no. phone, which we're using right now. It's the 20th. It wasn't the 12th because I got off the ship on Valentine's. Oh. You were like, yeah, oh, that's how you want to leave me is on Valentine's. Right. Remember? So, um, but thank you for not saying Valentine's. Um, but anyways, I don't feel like I need to check it anymore because I'm obviously in ketosis because I've been doing this for so long. Mm -hmm. I think, if I guess, how do I say this? I think if you're new to it, maybe having that reassurance helps you. Like, oh, okay, I'm doing things right because I'm seeing a good number on the blood ketones. Or I know when I've done that extended fasting, I was definitely checking my blood sugar and my ketones to try to get to a certain number, like, you know, how Dr. Boz says. But nowadays, I just don't feel the need for it. It's just like a, an expense I don't need to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would think if, if you're maybe doing like an extended fasting or you're new to keto um, or, you know, maybe you're doing something else and you just want to check those, then yeah, go about it. Do I think it's needed or required for keto? I don't feel like it is. Um, right family said, I think I need to make some fat bombs. I've not been really hungry, so maybe that'd be a good option. Yeah, I think that's a great option. We went, she was only what maybe four or five days ahead of me on doing keto, if you count your time in the, uh, in the hospital. Yeah, so I think it's either 21st or 22nd of February, is what we're calling our keto anniversary. Yeah, and this whole time, I've never this whole this would be four years, I've never checked my ketones. Yeah. I've never done it. No. He, he's just never, he's like, uh, no. I've honestly never really tracked anything. No. I mean, um, at the beginning, I was tracking my weight. I would weigh in like, what, once a week? But then yeah. I was like, then I got to the point where I was like, why? It's going to be what it's going to be. Right. My, I'm going to be in doing what I'm doing, regardless of what the scale says. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter to me, honestly. And I, I out of curiosity, every once in a while, I will check just to see. But right, and and I was checking my blood sugar for a while because you know I was a diabetic. And she's got real bad family history with it too. Yeah, so, so I was got her really concerned. Yeah, so I was checking my blood glucose. And um, especially like when I was carnivore, I was checking it because you would hear people who were like, oh my gosh, carnivore made my blood sugars rise so much. So I would check it. It never, it never, like I literally one day had uh, just a bowl of beef. I checked it before it was 98, after it was 99. So I was like, okay, I don't think I really need to monitor that much now if I was to Maybe eat something new over an extended period of time, I might check it. But at this point, like if we go to KetoCon and I eat something at one of the booths, 
I'm not going to like, oh my gosh, I got to check it. I'm eating that one sample that one time. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about it in the long term. Or if you're me, you're going back and three or four more samples. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. Um, Renee said, I add butter to every single meal in my coffee. Oh, nice. That's awesome. I, I use butter or mayo. I use mayo a lot, mm -hmm. y'all. Jamie said, mine is Almond Joy type, ooh, with stevia, core, coconut MCT powder, almond butter, dark chocolate chips with sliced almonds and unsweetened coconut. That sounds wow. really good, but no bueno for me. But you know, you could change that to a pecan joy. Right? <laughs> that sounds good. Jamie, you need to make those and share it in our group, please. I want to see it. Make it um, happen, Captain. Jodell said, wow, thank you. I never knew there was channels like that. Oh, right one. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was sharing all the people who uh, cook. That's awesome. Um, oh, and then Hyla's back. That's awesome, Hyla. Welcome back. Jackie said, high gluten, low carb is good too. West yes. Years. I really West like East. his channel. Yeah. I'm really, I'm so sad that he hasn't been putting out stuff on a regular. I but know. he had a, he moved and. Had a bunch of other stuff going on. Yes. And I do like the the battle. Yes. Where he does the battles of the different ones. Because it's like, okay, now you really see how the recipe ends up. Right. <laughs> and I really, I don't know. He seems really cool. I'd like to hang out with him. Like, at least buy him a drink or something, you know? Yes. Take him to dinner or something. Because he seems really cool. Mm -hmm. mm, that is good, y'all. I know. Only thing I wish, though, mm -hmm. we need to play with it and get the gravy a little thicker. Oh, yeah. Well, we probably could have put less of the, uh, the juices liquid. in. Yeah, that's true, too. But we wanted to empty the jars and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Jamie said, yeah, that happened to me, too. I do better with sweet early. Dessert can spike my hunger again sometime. Savory fat bombs might be better long term. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. And I agree. Um, or, or just doing... Basically, not adding a sweetener. Like if I did a pecan butter fat bomb, just don't add a sweetener to it. Because to me, pecans naturally have a little sweetness mm -hmm. to it, especially like cream cheese. So mixing cream cheese and pecan butter, that can, to me, it's sweet enough that away. Oh, just, thanks. Renee shared um, Radical Geeks channel. Yes. That's oh, awesome. yeah. That's Sunday. Oh, Jodell. Yeah, Jodell said she just got over uh, keto flu. Well, Aww. I'm glad you're over that. Yeah. That's good. That's a great start. Uh, Jamie said, soluble fibers really shouldn't be excluded from net carb ca calculation. Only insolubles are not diet indigested. And, you know, I just don't even get into all of the what's excluded, what isn't excluded. That's for me, the easiest is just to be total carbs. And I know that's something else that she addresses in her master class is the whole total carbs, net carbs, all of that. I just find for myself, it's easier just to be total carbs. And what does Dr. Barry call it? Reindeer games? Right. It's just like, why, why try to figure out, well, is this the type that can be deducted or not? Now, the thing is, like with my coach, I, I was even getting... Again, because I get lost in the weeds. I was counting the carbs in coffee. And she's like, Shelly, stop counting the carbs in your coffee. Like, there's there's a limit to what carbs you want to count. Like, some people are like, oh, there's carbs in meat. There's carbs in eggs. you got to add those carbs up. It's like some things, whatever minute carbs are in it, are not worth tracking. What you should worry about I guess I don't like the word worry. What you should be concerned about as far as carb tracking is when you're eating those keto treats, when you're eating carby, actual carb based foods, when the item has more carbs than protein or fat, that's the carbs you should be concerned about. Not your carbs in a, in a cup of coffee that's 0.6 or whatever it is, not the carbs in eggs. Like, don't worry about those carbs because if you're say your total carb limit is 20 a day and you're like oh but if i have this egg then i'm at 21 the egg has so much more nutritional value than the 0.5 carb that you should worry about 
look at, well, what's getting you to that 20 total carbs? Oh, is it because you had that keto treat that's 15 total carbs? Well, that's what you need to cut back on, not your egg or your... Natural foods. Yeah, not your little things like this, the jalapeno or the mushroom. Don't worry about that carb. It's the carb where you're adding, you know, basically a product. Uh, Renee said... I do physical therapy. Gait is walking in PT terms. Oh, that's right. Um, Tweety Q Cat said, I like your t-shirt tonight, Shelly. I don't think I've seen it before. Oh, this is thanks to Sharon, which yes. is also in our description. She got this for us at KPL. Yes. She made it Thank for you. Us. Yeah, she makes them. Uh, Renee said, I've stopped watching a lot of channels. Yes because of how the youtubers treat or speak to one another yes and that's how i feel too like i i want to i know sometimes i probably get on to heath so that probably turns some people off i wasn't gonna say nothing <laughs> uh, but yeah if it's like a continual thing then oh, that does kind of i'm so full i bet it does kind of get on my nerves um Oh, Crafty said she worked in orthopedics for years. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Jamie said, did you see that Sears Keto reviewed Keto Bricks? Steve and Courtney kind of hated them. I was cringing mm. on Robert's behalf. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. We can't all have good taste. I, did, I saw in Jackie's live tonight. So if y'all don't know Jackie's Jinx Journey... She's going live now before us. So she goes on at 5.30 Central. Yeah. I have to, like, figure out the time zone. But she's going live before us. So y'all can go over there, watch her before we go live. Uh, but, yeah, she. I saw some people in there tonight were talking about that they did a review. Um, but, I mean, that's kind of sad. Yeah. I guess in my my thing, this is my thinking. Oh, look, even Samantha commented. Aww. This is my thinking. What's she say? You know, like we don't do a whole lot of product reviews. Well, first of all, we don't use a lot of products, but I don't always like doing product reviews Drip. if it's a small company. Yeah. Because I feel like, especially if you have a negative view on it or it's not so good. I don't want to trash them. Yeah, and they're trying I, to struggle and to get their stuff started. Because here is somebody to me like Keto Brick, Keto Savage. He, this is his livelihood. This is what he is set up, yeah. you know, to do. This is supporting his family. This is supporting the workers he has, and they're such wonderful people. Um, uh, I don't personally know him like right. as a friend, but I've met him several times, chatted with him several times. And like you know, I've tuned into their live at five on Wednesdays, and I think they are generally good people. Yeah. So and in in you know, of course, we know keto break, but even if it was like, you know, somebody sent us something to try, and if I knew they were a small company, if I didn't like the product, I I just wouldn't even put it out. Honestly. And maybe I'm a little partial to him too, because when I found out with my nut allergies, I reached out to him. And asked him what ingredients of theirs, which bricks of theirs I should avoid. And he gave me a list. Yeah. He goes, look, stay away from these. The, he gave me like four or five of them said, these are clean for you. You can get these. These are mm -hmm. which one you should. Stay away from these. He goes, I don't want to hurt you. Stay away from these. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, the same way with uh, Chris from uh, Keto Chow. Mm -hmm. I've, I've told both of them. But they, the two of them, are really the two biggest keto products actual keto named products that i actually stand behind yeah most all the rest of them except for keto cracked are just in my opinion just straight gimmick and they're just yeah. play, they're just playing on the using the marketing and that's it yeah yeah we do like keto crack too yeah that sounds um, really good but i don't that's just my thing like if yeah. i knew and maybe it's because like growing up um, my mom, you know, was a, um, floral designer. I went to craft shows with her where she was selling her stuff. I then started making stuff. 
I, I had my own uh, uh, remodeling business for a while. Right. And so I, I know how hard it is. Yeah. And I have an Etsy shop. Uh -huh. And like, even when we were in like the foodie Groups. scene here, uh -huh. and it was like a small mom and pop place. And when you would see somebody like totally trash them, uh -huh. it like I would almost take it personal because yes. I'm like, why are you trying to trash a small company that is doing everything they can to try to be successful when there's, you know, 10,000 Walmarts out there who don't care about you as a customer or their employees or their employees or any of that. Right. So I always just feel like if I know it's a small company or, um, you know, even, I mean, we say small, but basically if it's a family owned person company, I call them mom and pops, right? If I know it's a mom and pop and they sent us something that said, Oh, please give it our, our products a, a try. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't even put it out. I'd just be like, you know what? Speaking Thank of. you for for giving this to us, but I don't really feel comfortable. That's how we found about them. Yeah, I don't really feel comfortable, you know, handing out. Uh, I didn't really care. Like, I would privately email them and say, thanks for sending it. You know, I, I'm sorry. It, it just wasn't in my taste because tastes are so subjective. And I guess we kind of know that from the foodie world because we would go to restaurants and be blown away. Somebody else would go and say, oh, this food tastes horrible because everybody's tastes are different. And so, especially if it's like a mom and pop place, I wouldn't blast them on any type of social media. Slam. Yeah, I would instead just say thanks for sending it to me. Um, I really feel like this isn't in my taste, so please, um, I'm I'm just not going to post a review. This is my feedback on it, uh -huh. and but thank you so much for thinking of my channel. And then if they came back and they were like, "No, go ahead, post whatever you want," then I'd be like, "Oh, okay. Well, if that's what you want, but I wouldn't do." It. That's my personal. Yeah. But again, I think it's just because. I have that mom and pop background, so I know how how much of a struggle it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, the Skinny's product, that's a, how we found out about them. Um, we, I don't know how we found out about them. I know we ended up meeting them last yeah. year at KetoCon. And they're we'll be again this year. I'm yeah. Hoping. We'll talk about them for a second. That, like this, this one right here, it's a cranberry twist. It's almost like it's a, it says it's a cocktail mixer, but you can drink it almost like a mocktail. I've ha I have made them before and used actual alcohol in it. It's really good, y'all. Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're, again, uh, a mom and pop shop. It's just a husband and a wife running the company. And I, I, he blew me away. Uh, maybe this is me just being partial to it or uh, being, uh, what do you call it, um, biased. But we let him try our five spice. And he's like, oh, my goodness. And I started telling him all the little things people were telling me about it. I want things I should do different. He goes, no, sir. He goes, do not listen to them. He goes, what you have is amazing. Stick with what you're doing. Keep it the way it is. Don't change it. And then I showed him how I uh, sent him a thing showing him how we started using it for his uh, uh, margarita mix. Mm -hmm. The rim of his uh, glass. And he, he was blown away that we did that. Mm -hmm. It just it made me feel good. I'm sorry. So it and it did, and they were like they're so genuine too. They were lovely, lovely people, and I know like cocktails or mocktails aren't everybody's thing when it comes to keto, and that's why I say like I think these are really good like special occasions mm -hmm. or parties. So you, you feel like especially if you're going to go to like a party and you know everybody's going to be drinking. And you feel like maybe you'll be pressured to have like that sugary drink. Well, this is a way you can have your own and not have all the sugar in it. So, yeah. but again, we just, Should we love the people. A, huh? I was going to pull one on Sean. Yeah. But we love the people. And again, it's but just it's just a single serve. Yeah. A little uh, drink packet. Oh, uh, it's like a powder. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And we have an affiliate link for them, too. <laughs> of course. But again, anybody who's an affiliate or anybody that we ever do a review on, it's because we really like 
they not only the owners, uh-huh. but we also like the product. Yes. So if we if we're not reviewing the product, probably we don't care for it. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yes. Okay. So Hylia said she worked at a small clinic, and but she got to trade to trash. I know it's a woman. Over there. Got to trade to assist the nurse and doctor. And she removed sutures, staples, casts, took blood pressure. Wow. wow. And then Samantha said, thank y'all for having me. It was such a great time. Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Oh, okay. Let me send this link. To? Um, Samantha just sent this. Oh, okay. So let me, um, Renee, I'm going to send it to you. And you can post that in there. So if if you don't want to go through the master class, but you want to book the consultation, uh, Samantha just sent me the link. So if all you want to do is just talk to her on the consultation, follow the link that Renee will put in the comments so that you can do that. I think he needs to go outside. Oh, maybe. Come here, buddy. Um, you ready to go? Where's your sister? Let her both go. Come on. Come on. Oh, that was so fun. Good boy. Who got a flashlight this week? See what's going on out there. <laughs> oh, good Jason, boy. Good interview, Samantha. Lots of food for thought. Oh, Right Family said, we have mainly you guys and a couple more that we watch. I got so overwhelmed with some of the others. And sometimes that's what I see too. And and kind of like what we were talking with um, um what we were talking with Samantha about is sometimes when you hear all the different voices, Good boy. it can be you ready overwhelming, go in? Oh, right? Because oh, everybody has their own way of trying to do things or go. to change things up. Here you go, buddy. And sometimes that just gets overwhelming. So again, just focus on who makes you feel good and helps you on your journey. Good boy. Uh, Renee said, bacon fat, avocado oil for cooking, and yes. make your own mayo. That's good. Jamie said, I use that ex- exact coconut oil. It's even cheaper than butter at Costco. I know, isn't it? Well, I started asking if you wanted one or two. Mm-hmm. You're done with this, right? Put it back. Oh, yeah. you need to make another batch. Look yeah. at that, y'all. We're so bougie. We're recycling to go containers. <laughs> you know it. Um, Renee said, Shelly made me a butter snob, so I have to have my carry gold and no other. And I have to say, this week, a couple times I put Kerrygold instead of the coconut oil. And what I noticed is when, of course, the Kerrygold, uh, the regular butter, not so much, but the Kerrygold. Oh, there's a little. Oh, I think that's a little piece of meat. Oh, well, you, you want it? Eat it. You can eat it. No, nah, that's fine. I'll give it to the dogs. Um, What I noticed is the Kerrygold seemed to make the coffee really, really creamy. Um, even more so than like the coconut oil. And of course, more than the regular butter, it just gave it this real nice, creamy flavor to my coffee. Wait, at Aldi today, we got some. Oh yeah, knockoff Kerrygold. Yeah. Um, How much would I tell you was this? Like four dollars or something? It was three forty-five. Um, but yeah. Um, I do like the, the carry gold. Oh, come on. The fridge wouldn't shut on me. <laughs> right. Family said mayo, mustard, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and pickle relish is the real Big Mac sauce. That's right. Thank you for reminding us. Right, family. And that, see right there, perfect dip or sauce that is going to be high in fat. That's really good. That's why McDonald's is bad for you. Because I'm said, fat. I make spicy mayo with Frank's Red Hot. Ooh, that is good. Yes. Yeah, see, another great way of doing it, y'all. Jodell said, I'm making notes with all this great information. I never knew this is awesome. Oh, that's so, thank you, Jodell. It's so nice. Um, uh, Renee said, the way I see it, I don't buy keto treats or a lot of junk, so spending the extra on bougie butter and eggs is totally fine with me. Exactly. I mean, if it like kind of comes down to it, well, if you've got the, you only have X amount to spend, like 
spend it on the stuff that's really good. Like we did get a little bougie. So one of the recipes we're doing oh, me, right. <laughs> is beef wellington. So I know that's bougie, right? Uh, so he today, he got the um, filet mignons and yeah, they were a little pricey, but I think overall it's going to make it really special. And again, you know, sometimes I feel like keto, yes, it is so easy to do keto on a budget. And sometimes when you think about a fancy meal, like I always thought, oh, a fancy meal is a little carbier, right? Uh -huh. Like, oh, you're thinking like a posh meal, like at a French restaurant. It's all, you know, it's going to have, I know, it would have a lot more carbs to it. Well, sometimes I want to have that fancy keto meal. So we're going to be making beef wellington. We'll record it. We'll probably put it out on Monday. But we're going to be making a beef wellington. And I feel like that's like a nice upscale special occasion dinner. So, yeah, it's a little more expensive than, say, getting your traditional steaks or even ground beef. But sometimes, like, instead of going Life out to short, eat, why not? instead of going out to eat, you can make a delicious, high-quality meal that is steakhouse worthy uh -huh. at home for really a fraction of the cost. Because going out to a steakhouse nowadays, like, if you could get out of there for less than $200, you are doing well. Steakhouses are so expensive now. I'm so, if, <laughs> yeah, so, like... Today he spent for the beef fillets, it was $34. But that's for both of us. Like, where are you going to go? If and we went out to eat, that'd be one plate for one of us. Maybe. Plus, we still have to do uh, all of our sides. Plus our drinks. And, and tipping. And the tipping. And we're probably going to get dessert, too. <laughs> yeah, especially at that keto restaurant. So, I think we did it good. And my thing is, like, even a beef fillet or a filet mignon at a restaurant for $33 for one person? Where are you going to find that? Right. Um, at least not here in Houston. Well, I'm just saying most restaurants, when we go out to eat, especially the steakhouse, like, even even like uh, saltgrass or whatever, a regular uh, run-of-the-mill standing like a middle-of-the-road steakhouse, we're still going to look at about $30 a plate. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, John has said, here in Western California, it's hard to buy meat that's not lean. Oh, I bet, because it's still on that craze of low fat. Uh -huh. uh, Blue Duff said, we like Ninja Turtles, too. My kid had a big crush on Raphael. Oh, wow. Oh, oh you went to Ninja Teenage, Mi New Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah, say that you five times fast. I'm not. Um, I went to them? Well, we went to the movie, right? Yeah. But didn't you used to really like it? Oh, yeah, it was really good. I used to really like that as a kid. Yeah. Which one was your favorite? My Donatello. <laughs> so funny. Um, Patty said, ha, ha, ha. On the topic of adding fat, I let butter melt into my chili dog bowl the other night. Delicious. Mmm, nice. that does sound good. That's what I was doing to my that chili, too. Me. Oh? We got to do those fat burgers where we put the butter inside oh, of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, the butter burgers is what we call them. Yeah. Mm. We've never done a video on those. <laughs> she drew with them. She loves them so much. I know. Well, it's like the bubbles just like, I'm not used to all the bubbles. I'm used to the H-E-B bubble. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, Jackie said, there was a lady who didn't lose a single pound for 10 years some of us are just super metabolically, mentally, and physically damaged. It takes more time. Not everyone's body focuses on weight. Amen. Yeah, exactly. And it does um, get a little uh, daunting for us, a little frustrating, too, when we think we see almost every keto channel out there, like their main focus is just about weight. It's just kind of like, why? Yeah. And yeah, just like I've been unhealthy for 40 plus years. So I can't expect that in a year or two or three or four years that I'm going to auto, auto, uh, be in like a size eight. Like I've said too, I p did not put all this weight on overnight. It's not going to come off overnight. Yeah, it takes so just, time. It's going to be what it's going to be. 
And that's why I also like Samantha, uh -huh. because I knew immediately, I was like, I don't need somebody that's only going to be eight weeks with me. Like, I need somebody for the long run uh, that'll help me, you know, figure everything out. Uh, Gina Marie's here. Hey. Said, good evening, everyone. How the H-E double hockey sticks are y'all? I've been tired. in unplanned maintenance since July 2020, but I've never quit maintenance or wow. never quit, quit keto. I don't know why nice. I can't talk. Well, it, there's nothing wrong with being in maintenance. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right? To just be able to, like Samantha says, intuitively eat. I guess I've been doing that since the beginning, huh? <laughs> Basically. Um, Renee said, amen, Jackie. Overall health should be the focus with the added benefit of pounds or loss. So many diseases can be remedied yes. with this way of eating. Yes. And that's how I feel. Like, yes, I get i got wrapped up into it the weight loss but like when my coach was like so what's the alternative shelly and i was like right because really why did i come to keto because i didn't want to be a diabetic anymore and there's a thing so not it's not, there's a term out there it's not used that much but it's called skinny fat you can be as thin as a rail but still be sickly still have a lot of this, uh, stuff going on inside yeah that would still help you to do eat the proper human diet. Yes, like my uh, my brother has always been Mr. little Debbie. <laughs> yeah, he's always been thin, like just always, like and and he would live off of little Debbie's energy drinks, full of sugar, mm -hmm. everything. Even now in his fifties, and he smokes. Well, yeah, and he smokes, but. An average person looks at him and they're like, oh, well, he's skinny, so therefore he's healthy. And I'm like, I guarantee you probably any day he'll probably have a heart attack because he has never ate anything healthy. Like he will, he subsists only on drive through or junk. delivery. Yeah. And that's all he's ever eaten. And yeah, he looks skinny. So people are like, oh, well, he must be metabolically fit. And it's like metabolically fit doesn't mean that you're just skinny. There, there's more to metabolically fit than just being skinny. Like, are you healthy? What are your no. your numbers? How is your heart actually doing? One of our good friends that we actually met on the cruise, mm -hmm. um, on on a big cruise that we took. He, everybody at our table thought he was the healthiest person. He was skinny. He exercised every day. He didn't he smoke. Never smoked. He didn't drink. Well, I guess he would drink on occasionally. He had a, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? So he worked out. He walked. He did all these things oh, that. Everything you're supposed to do. Everything you're supposed to do. Heart attack. Like that. Like totally unexpected. It was a, uh, what do they call it? Widow's. Widowmaker. Widowmaker. Yeah. is basically what happened and they were married what 46 years yeah. and it was totally unexpected but and when we talked to some because we were, became really good friends we talked to the others like the rest of us we were all like flabbergasted because again it's like us, him? The, we were like him like he exercised he didn't he did smoke everything. he did everything that they tell you in traditional health that you're supposed to do to be healthy and live a long life the rest of us, like some of the other people that were at his same age, guess what? They were overweight. They, um, you know, were trying, they were diabetic. They had this and they had that, but they're still alive. So that's why you can't say just because somebody is skinny and doesn't gain weight means that they're a fit and healthy person. That's being skinny does not determine health. That's just what society says looks healthy but that does not equal healthy but i feel like i'm being preachy sana <laughs> said i stole from april 2020 so like 15 months into keto lost 101 pounds wow but my father passed suddenly oh i'm sorry yeah, depression okay. had me gain even though i kept keto started losing once i got therapy oh i'm so sorry sana yeah, and good. that and that just shows that your body doesn't, oh, it, it isn't 
like I saw somebody on another post, I won't go into it, but they were like, it's physics, calories in, calories out. It isn't like that. And just because you're eating like even 100% keto all of the time and you're doing everything right, if there's other things going on in your life that is causing depression, stress, anything like that, your body responds. Like I know my body very, very much responds to outside influences. So like at my last job, I was so freaking stressed. And even though I was doing everything right, like my body was like, uh, uh, we're not going to lose a pound. You obviously the world is falling around you. So you need to keep all of this weight. In fact, we're going to put a few more on because it looks, it feels like the world is crashing and that's how your body responds to things that are outside stressors so you can do everything right and that's why sometimes it it isn't just what you're eating that you have to evaluate other areas in your life and sometimes like for me you focus on one thing but i'm doing this well what else is going on what else is attributing to um you know the stall or the weight gain and so forth, you know, how are other things impacting your life? And oftentimes you'll find out, oh, well, yeah, I have a really stressful job going on right now, or yeah, I'm doing this, or I just started working out, or, you know, the, you know, I'm going through whatever issues in life that's going to impact. And like, I know my body is very much a, well, we react to whatever is emotionally going on mm -hmm. um shauna said next friday night uh oh what's next friday night emmy uh emmy's here said hello hey. first time here well welcome oh, emmy. Howdy. thanks for coming to the hungry horde i hope you like it here uh, you just missed a really good live with the coach so maybe you go back and re-watch that uh, Jonathan said a lot of questions were asked. You guys did great. Oh, Aww, thank, thank you. you. Lori said, Shelly, I honestly believe this could be the answer I've been looking for. Oh, yes. Oh, Lori, that's so sweet. I really hope so too. Patty said that was supposed to be now following her. Oops. Oh, off to bed. Oh, well, good night, Patty. Shauna said, hmm, I guess I missed the masterclass, but I signed up for the free workshop next Friday. Oh, oh nice. okay, nice. That's what next Friday is. Oh, good. Well, that's okay. It'll probably come back. Jonna said, butter bites and coffee is my jam. Oh, nice. that's nice. And that's one thing uh, for y'all that are going on the cruise. There is, it's by Lady Provisions. Oh. You have to check each uh, what the ones are, but it's a butter bomb. And I've shown them on some of our vlogs before. I have found them at Sprouts and at HEB, but they're little, I, I forget how much, how many grams of fat, but it's a butter bomb. Check each one. Usually the vanilla, it's just vanilla and whatever the fat source is. Some of the other flavors do have a sweetener in it. And I don't, I think it's actually might be sugar. You have to read the ingredients, but um, they are uh, really good to bring like on a trip or on the cruise. So like yes. if you're going you're on the up. cruise, yeah, I'm going to try to find the picture real quick, y'all. Um, if you're going on the cruise, these are really good to pack with you and just have that to drop in your coffee. Yes, the coffee butter bombs. So They're a little me... like like little medallions, right? Yeah. Here, I'm gonna. Well, after the five million pop ups, I hate that about websites. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, here, this one's really good. So. Oh yeah. Okay, me... I remember now. I know you would. Let me share this, y'all. Okay, share, and let me add here. So if you're going on the cruise, here, I'll take my picture off there. I really like these. So they're coffee bombs. I said butter bombs. The vanilla cinnamon, 
Now, usually when I've got them at HEB and at Sprouts, it's like $10 a box. So I know they're a little pricey, but look at the ingredients. But it's also convenience. Yeah, it's convenience. So here's the ingredients on this one. This is the one I usually get. Coconut oil, collagen peptides, butter, vanilla, and cinnamon. That's it, y'all. This is perfect. Here's what they look like when you buy them in the store. So you get nine bombs. So it's a little over a dollar for each one. But again, I have used these every single time, like when we went to KPL, when we, um, well, we trips. don't really do it for KetoCon because that's just right here. But KPL on the cruise, any of that, I think these are really nice. Um, and here's the nutrition on the back. So you see that is 12 fat and four protein because of the collagen peptides. But that's an awesome way to add fat to your... Now, on the cruise, I mean, you can go to the um, buffet and get some pats of butter. But like I like this. It adds a little bit of vanilla cinnamon to your coffee. I just find these are nice and easy. And you see how clean the ingredients are. Just another option if you want to do that. So I hope that was helpful. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Awesome. Um, Jackie said, I wish I could do more than three tablespoons of my coffee, but I feel like it might overtake the coffee and make it too oily. Um, well, I would say, like, I put six tablespoons in, but I typically get three cups of coffee. So, yeah, I if you're uh, doing two to three, probably per cup, yeah, more than that, probably make it too oily. Um, now, sometimes what I've been doing, too, is so I'll have the six tablespoons, which works out for, to about two tablespoons per cup of coffee. And then on my second and third cup of coffee, I also whip up in my frother some heavy cream, and then I put that on top. And so it doesn't make the coffee like oily, but what it does is it adds that nice little foam and... and um, fluffiness to the top of the coffee so that it feels more like a latte but then that adds a more fat because of it's usually about three tablespoons of heavy cream that's getting frothed up to then add to the top of my coffee and then that increases the fat so that might be another way of doing that to get more fat in the coffee Brenda said, I'm new. Welcome, Brenda. Hey. Found you watching Jackie and 2KK. Nice. Thank How you. How long um, have you had your channel? Watch some old videos today. Amazing. What a difference, y'all. Oh, thank you. Looking so much more healthy. Thank wow, you. Wow, Brenda. Thank uh, you. How long have we had it? All three um, years, probably? Probably about three years. Yeah. Yeah. So we um, started... You know, at first we didn't really put out too many. And then if, um, if you go watch some of our very first videos, like the first two or three. The chocol videos. No, even before one. that. Well, before that, was it? It was just, I randomly put them up just from when we were on vacation in Alaska. Yeah. And so that had nothing to do with the keto or anything like that. Yes. But the very first keto recipe video we did was the chocolates. The Somebody fries. forced me to do it. Yeah, I forced him to do the chocolate fries. Yeah. That was our very first one. And then we really started getting serious about the channel when he had his multiple sclerosis flare up. Yeah. And he was just at a really bad point in his life. And I knew this channel would give him the motivation. And it's and all hope. because of folks like y'all. Thank you yes. so much. And y'all have really changed my life. And it's folks like y'all that keep us going yes we look forward to this every week oh yeah uh that's why we go on for hours because we just mm. love it so much but it y'all have helped us so immensely like when he had that flare-up i know i've talked spot. about it before but it was such such a dark moment and if you've we've all had those traumatic times in our life where you almost are at the point of losing all hope. And that's kind of where we were. We were keto and we were just doing what we were doing. We were watching the channels and all, but you know, that was just such a, a very pivotal moment, pivotal moment 
thank you. And that's when I knew at that point, I was like, you know, if I could get Heath where, you know, hey, every week you got to put out these videos, it gave him something to do to get his mind off of his MS. And because of that, and then seeing the community just rally behind him, like two crazy ketos, Joe and Rachel, they were very, very influential because they encouraged us so much. Like I remember Joe for that birthday, dedicating it to you yes. and your MS, like all of that really helped us. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we started it really pushing on it, just thinking, okay, that'll get heat, you know, give him hope to move on. And then just during all of that, we just found all of the hungry horde that just has given us more than we ever thought that we would ever have in this community. Like I was just like, okay, we're just going to put out videos so that people know that, Hey, you know, there's struggles with multiple sclerosis and, you know, keto can help that because um, when we were watching all the stuff on multiple sclerosis, it was either go plant-based or, oh, we don't know what's going on. Here I am on multiple sclerosis and nobody was talking about how keto could help multiple sclerosis. So we were like, okay, we need to focus and, and see, does keto make a, a difference on multiple sclerosis? Does it help you, you know, um, get better and, and, you know, what we could do from there and just kind of showing how he's moved and how the keto has helped him move forward. And then meeting this community, it just really has made such an impact on our yes. lives, like immensely. You thank know? you all so much. Oh, okay. That got really deep. Um, but thank you for saying that, Brenda. And thanks for coming to the word. Yes. Renee said, Heath, Heath, we did go back, and I don't know how many times for this steak. For the steak. How many times for the steak? Mm -hmm. How uh, we did go back. I don't know. I don't know what I'm. Explain it to us. We're, we're not catching. <laughs> Sorry, Renee. Uh, Jamie said, I'm tracking blood glucose and ketones, Dr. Boss ratio, and I'm still looking for the sweet spot for feeling my best. Well, uh -huh. that's good. You'll have to let us know how it works. Yeah. Shauna said, currently cutting out Hungry Heath, member of the Horde Stickers. Thank nice. you, Shauna. Thank you. Yeah, if you ever get stickers from us, it's thanks to our wonderful channel moderator, Airfront Auntie. She makes all of the stickers. And this, she's such a saint. She oh. went yesterday and bought a new printer just so it'll make it easier for her. I know. She says she did it for other reasons, too, but... That's what she led with, though. So that's what's sticking with me. But um, and then also all of our spice labels, yes. she makes those for us too. So thank you, Shauna. Uh, Jonna said straws. I use them all the time. Oh yeah, should I do have a straw in this one? Right. <laughs> I should probably put. We need one a longer that. one for that, no. Um, well, Jackie said, "I wish Wes and Kelly Hogan went to the events." You know, Kelly Hogan has gone yeah. to a couple events because um, I think there was one last year. Um, in, in Austin, wasn't it? Yeah, in Austin. Judy Cho. Yeah. She put it on in Austin. And I think. Um, Where does Kelly live? I don't remember. Kelly lives in the Carolinas, so oh, okay. North Carolina. Okay. So Kelly came to that. And um, um, Laura Spath came uh -huh. and a few others. But we just couldn't make it to Austin the weekend that they had it. Yeah. I don't think she came to KetoCon, though. Um, I don't think so. Kelly Hogan, I don't I'm, think, was no. at Ke uh, KetoCon. She, now, Laura Spath went to KetoCon. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, I wish Wes did, too, right? Uh -huh. He'd be fun to hang out with. But maybe... Uh, Jean says, wonderful interview. So informative. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Jean. Thanks for watching. Kim says, do you use keto chow? I'll let All you All the time. All the time. And in fact, I use their tomato basil uh, soup to make a homemade barbecue sauce. And we got a video on that too. Yes. So we use that. And then what's your favorite way of having keto chow? As an ice cream. 
And thanks to our friend Blue Dove, she convinced us to buy a, a creamy. We were using a uh, another brand uh, ice cream maker. What was it? The um, the Cuisinart. The Cuisinart. It works really good. It's the one you take it apart, you put the bowl in the freezer, and then you put it together and it makes the ice cream for you. And that was really good. We used Keto Chow to do that. But then we were at an event, and luckily Jamie Blue Dove brought her creamy with us, and we got to try it. And it's like night and day different than the Cuisinart. And we're like, all right, we're going to buy one. We, ended, yeah. we like this so good. We bought two of them, <laughs> two creamies, because she found a better deal on another place and took the. We took, sent one of them back, so we yeah, have we, we got don't better. Have two. We yeah, we bought one. two. We only well, we returned one of them. Um, we got a better deal. But yeah, we like it as it's a really creamy. good. And then uh, Shauna earlier, air frying auntie, she mentioned doing the fudge. Yes, that's so really good too. The fudge is really good. Um, there's all different ways you. Can uh, use I, y'all might you, you may have. Look, wait, I don't remember which video it was. One of our lives, I made like I don't know eight of them, and we ate some really spicy food. But I did not make them correctly. I put way too much water in them, so everybody got freaked out because I drank like eight keto chows. What it looked like? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. What Renee was referring to is we went how many back how many times for the steak at KetoCon? Oh, remember the yes. steak? Yes, I dr- <laughs> I did drive bys of them every. The Piedmontese had yes. a booth, and they were grilling up all day long. Yeah, at KetoCon, they were grilling up New York strips. And we're not fans of New York strips, but, but theirs that, were amazing. Forgot, and they would just do like bites, right? And it was like little a slivers. little sliver. And so, as like you could just smell it all throughout Keto. Pond. I'd walk around the, the the perimeter and come back and get another one. <laughs> yeah, like oh, are you having steak? Oh my! <laughs> In fact. <laughs> We got some uh, New York strips on sale quite a while back. And then we have two left still in the freezer. I wanted to eat them for dinner one night. And she's like, nope, I don't like New York strips. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm just not crazy about them. But Even those... we put them in the sous vide and then and, <sighs> uh, sear them off, they still don't turn out as good as a ribeye. <laughs> but the Piedmontese. These were, those were amazing. Those were freaking amazing. Like... Everybody, I think, as soon as they were cutting them up, they were over there, and that's us too. We were like, we would even eye them. We would be like two booths over, going, "I think they're almost ready. I think they're almost ready." <laughs> you know what we're gonna do this year? Uh-huh. We're gonna bring one of those little packets with us and sprinkle some uh, thigh spice on them as we're eating them. Ooh! And then as soon as we would see them start to slice one, we'd run over there. Oh, are you slicing some? <laughs> she talked to him, and I go grab a couple. Yeah. Oh, oh, or I run over. Oh, my husband hasn't tried yet. <laughs> Swiss is here. Hey, they're going to know what we're doing this year. I know. They probably hope, already do. I hope they're going to be there this year. I know. Oh, Matrice said, hi, y'all. We'll have to ke- uh, play catch up. Hey. Uh, are you, you still awake? A, wow. You missed a, a good interview, Matreya. Kim said a subscriber sent it to Serious Keto. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Shauna said, Heath and the traveling mic. Huh? <laughs> you went running around with your mic on. Okay. Thank you for posting that, Renee. Um, Matreya said, I found the BJ's Wellesley Farm butter taste great. Oh, we don't have We don't BJ's. have BJ's in this part of the world, though. But thanks. Oh, uh, if we did, we could check them out. Oh, I'm sorry. And then she said, by the way, my lips are still mad at me. Yes. We did it right. <laughs> she had the, uh, the, the, Cooper the Inferno. Cooper's Inferno, and now her lips are in an Inferno. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. But it, Wash it, it down with some keto chow. Isn't it fun, though, that you, like, that's instant, uh, like, what did they call it? Lip plumper? Lip yeah. Lip plumper, where all of a sudden you're like, my lips are... Not very happy, but man, look at that smile. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jamie said, my Costco has Kerrygold Copycat too. Shiny green box, 95% grass fed from New Zealand. It's good oh, too. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but this one we found at Aldi. <laughs> yeah. Cynthia said, wow, beef Wellington. Can't wait for the video. Me, Me either. either. <laughs> I can't wait to eat it, y'all. Because um, also, we've got, we got, I didn't know. She's out of the blue. She called, uh, she messaged me and says, hey, I just saw something on your Facebook. Um, I mean, on your email. Uh, there was, uh, y'all have probably seen us. We go to this uh, Mexican restaurant around the corner from us. 
They're at a local chain here in Houston. Well, they're doing a celebration right now for uh, Valentine's, a special thing. What's the what's the, the whole deal? So what it is for two, it's a dinner for two, 50 bucks. Yeah. But it is the uh, combo fajitas of steak and chicken, plus you get shrimp bruschette, plus ribs. Now, I've never had the ribs before. I don't even... We'll I don't have know if to see. Be clean. Yeah, we'll have to see what they're sauced with, or if they're sauced, and queso, and then all the fixes that come with fajitas. Now, last time, last few times, we tell them, you know, we don't want the rice or beans, and we don't want tortillas. Tortilla. So instead, they'll do mixed veggies. Yeah. Though the only thing that makes me mad about gringos is they put corn in their pico and corn in their veggies. And so I have to pick all of the corn out. And it just makes me mad. Like, I don't want the corn. So I was trying to decide if we wanted to go tomorrow. No. But they said the thing started today. Uh-huh. And it runs until Tuesday. Yeah. So I was like, okay, fine. Here's what we're going to do. We got three videos we want to record tomorrow. We have coffee talk on Sunday. We already obviously have leftovers we need to eat. We're going to probably end up with leftovers from Saturday's dinner. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Because I got small enough steaks. Yeah. I said, so what we're going to do then, I don't want to go out on Valentine's Day. It's just too badness. And I don't want to do that to the restaurant staff. They're already going to have their hands full. Let's just go Monday. We're helping them. Uh, right, family said, good night, y'all. We have to get to Walmart when they open before the people get their milk sandwiches before it snows. Oh, oh yeah. Goodness. Another bonus of uh, going out to eat there at that restaurant, too. You earn points, and so you can use it for discounts later. Yeah. Oh, and they have chicharrones. Oh, yeah, that, too. And so instead of getting chips, we always say. And they even have a new plaque. They have a new sign as you're walking into the place, and they have placards on every table now saying keto-friendly. Keto keto-friendly. I just like the guy who owns the company. He has like three other little restaurants too. In he Houston. Has a, yeah, in Houston. Because they, they're a Houston-based restaurant. In fact, the first original restaurant he opened up was in this, the, the same city I graduated from. So I'm, I'm a little partial to him. I, I, I like home team. That's the way I feel. So, I mean, and I've met him a couple of times. He's a really good guy. And, and we have several friends that have worked for the company too. Yeah. And, and they treat their employees good too. So that makes it even more... Makes me more of a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just like that, you know, he's like paying attention yeah. to, I guess, the food community. Because yeah. I know that it, there are quite a few, like, foodies that are yeah. sometimes keto. Yeah. <laughs> and anytime I have reached out to him about any, like, difficulties or any problems we've had. He's always been Johnny on the spot trying to fix it and everything, uh -huh. you know, and they've always fixed, they can good care of us. That's what we really want to support them. Again, you know, mom and pop. Jamie said, Oh, butter burgers sound yummy. Okay. Uh, Renee said, Oh, yummy. I got to catch up on videos. Oh, uh, Keto Simple said, Butterfield burgers don't work well for me. I like my burgers more rare than most everyone else. Ah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Keto Simple said, Keto, come for the weight loss, stay for everything else. Uh -huh. uh, Renee said, I'm definitely going to be binge watching the new release for you. I saw where you posted that. Like, Oh, yeah. Were you watching it like midnight or one in the yeah, morning? Yeah, but, but I'm kind of confused on the way she uh, described it, though. Like, some she said, like, she didn't want to watch any more of it or something. Oh, like, it was scaring she? her. Because I want to check that Just out. Just Jason. Too. Hey. Hey, hey, brother. Um, and just Jason said, stress is the biggest killer. I have learned to let go of things I can't control and focus on the things that matter in life. Amen. And it's hard sometimes to do that. And, and it definitely, that's where, um, you know, like, uh, my coach told me, you know, meditation and find other ways of doing that. And I find what helps me is kind of getting out in the sun. She actually told her to stay in bed longer. <laughs> I know. I wonder I love her. <laughs> but like, um, I find sometimes like, especially if I'm having a stressful day or I, I can feel myself getting anxious. I'll just go outside. Like I'll take the dogs outside for a few minutes. She'll disappear on me. And 
and and being in the sun, it just helps like calm that and get that stress away. So it's just kind of finding ways of how can you mitigate the stress and and how to like Jason just let it go and find other ways let to kind go. of oh my gosh. Reichwood said, found those lady provisions at Fresh Market. The oh, cocoa nice. have maple syrup. Yeah. I'm um, not sure how much, but the other ones are really good. That's right. The, the cocoa had, I remember it was some kind of sweetener. And I was like, so dang it. Do we but, need yeah. another pack of those before we go on the cruise? Probably. Okay. It does make it easy. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and yeah, they fit in the, the fridge in your room, too. So yeah. In the cabin, I guess what they call it, right? Just Jen said, are y'all taking the bus to the cruise port? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we yes, do yes, plan yes. on taking the bus to the it's cruise port. It's the easiest way to do it. And yeah. then we'll get there with everybody else. Because I just don't want to, uh, one, I want to be with everybody else. So um, Gang mentality. <laughs> right. And it just makes it easy because then when I meet, then I'm there with Debbie. Like last year on the cruise, it was so easy to get on board because she put us all there together as a group. Because what I really love she did too mm -hmm. is the cruise line gives you a little uh, label for your luggage. And that's your checkout time or your party you go with. Mm -hmm. Well, Debbie gives you one that supersedes that one. And so we all get to leave together. So it's really handy. So we might as well go together and leave together. And it just makes it life easier if we just work the program basically yeah because you'll get off the ship sooner but then getting on the ship it was just really easy last yes, time no stress we were, and i feel like if we drove down there we'd either have to be rushing yes to meet the group or we would end up missing the group or we'd be standing around waiting for the group and it just and then we have to pay for parking right and the price of taking the bus it is going to be cheaper than yes. paying to park our car there. and easier. <laughs> I don't yeah. have to drive then. <laughs> That's just us. Um, I know some people are going to drive and park by the port. I'm, I'm just good with not having to worry about any of that. And just getting on a bus, hanging out for a good hour. Cause it's from the hotel yes, to gonna there. Say. It's going to be an hour, uh, hour uh, and a half depending yeah. on traffic. Yes. And so why should I have to deal with traffic and driving? Because when I can sit likely, back and visit with my friends, I would be the one driving y'all. Well, because she won't let me drive her car. She tries to <laughs> climb on that hill. But um, this way I could just sit back and chit chat with all of you. And I think that'd be a lot more fun for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Of course, probably by the end of the cruise, you're going to be like tired. Get away from me, me Shelly. <laughs> right. Uh. Sana said, it's hard not having proper closure when a parent passes. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's not fun. Jamie said, my phone is about to die and will take my ability to chat with it. Aww. We'll go charge fun it. Fun times as always. Have a great weekend. Good you night. too, Jamie. Um, Jackie said, I make 15 to 18 ounces of coffee. Not sure how many cups that is. Well, I think my cup holds... Probably 12 to 15 ounces mm, each nice. one. So I think when I fill up the pitcher, it's um, like 36 ounces. So I guess it's a 12 ounce cup, mm. right? Sure. Um, you want me to do math? Okay. Reichlin said that period of time was so weird. Oh, she's talking. Okay. I don't know the whole thing. Shauna said, I think my favorite series was sadly when you were displaced to the hotel really that was your favorite series <laughs> see if you could stay keto okay oh. and do it under that situation was so inspirational I mean, it was oh, so thanks, easy Shana. i feel i mean this probably comes off rude or whatever but i'm not trying to be i'm just you just have to want to is my thing that's my biggest takeaway is do you want to stay keto yeah i that, guess so it's it's because honestly it's really i feel like it's really easy it really is. But again, that may be coming from, you know, a place of bias because I have her. So uh, there's no I way keep I'm, them uh, in line. Well, not just that, but I'm just like, it's not me trying to be keto and you're not keto. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it does make it easier that we're together. both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think it, 
that was the whole thing too. Like when we were displaced to a hotel for four months, y'all, if you're new here, it was four months. So a couple, it would be Do two, not recommend. two years ago this month, oh, yeah. um, we ended up the snow copolips. Yeah. The snow copolips, like several of our rooms were destroyed in our house, um, due to water damage. And so we could not, the house was not livable. Um, and so we couldn't stay here for four months. So they put us in, uh, a, a extended hotel. Stay. Yeah. An extended stay. And it was kind of like, I mean, that, I guess my point of view is like keto is just the way we eat. Yeah. Like, so whether I'm at a hotel or on a trip or anything, this, this is how I eat. It wouldn't, those outside things don't change how I normally eat. Yeah. Um, so like when we were displaced to the hotel, um, I was just like, yeah, that's like, I'm not going to change how I'm eating. I'm still going to be eating the same things. Now I'm just cooking in a different place, which had its own set of challenges. Yeah. I guess the thing is, maybe this is just me though. Like when something really stressful happens or very traumatic happens, I'm very much a person that's like, okay, we're going to stay on task. Like this is what we're doing. And I, I don't get overwhelmed or too stressed out on those when it's something very dramatic. Like I don't like freak out on and go, Oh my gosh, I can't handle anything. I'm like, like the bigger the trauma, the more I'm like, okay, Nope, we got this and I, I control what I can control and we move on and we I'm gonna be the pillar of strength during this. Now, if it's a little thing, like something happens during the day and a box gets cut open, <laughs> then oh I <laughs> then I'm like freaking out and I'm like, oh my gosh, like why is this happening? I can't believe this happened. And I make that like a big deal. I know that seems silly, right? I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> but um, but the big things in life, like even when I nearly died, I don't feel like I, I even... I freaked out more than she did. Yeah, I was just like, oh, we got this. And honestly, the thing with the being at the hotel, I like puzzles. That's true. So my thing was, all right, let's do this. And we can show everybody actually how easy it is to stay keto. Because I really felt like it was easy. The hardest part was the lack of a real kitchen. <laughs> oh, I'm saying. We had a two-burner stove and and a microwave. That's all that was there at that hotel. Yep. So that's why you saw us. We brought the air fryer with us and the uh, Instant Pot. Yeah. And we use both a lot. Yeah. That no air fryer oven. was our <laughs> oven. <laughs> yeah, we had no oven for four months. And I was but... like, well, we can do this. Right. It was actually end up being pretty easy. Once we got everything dialed in. Yeah. Once we kind of got that really upset team. me is we dented both of them, but moving them so much. There's a dent right there. I'm looking at it right now on yeah. the air fryer. I mean, on the instant pot. And there's a dent on the side of the air fryer. Mm -hmm. But other than happened. that, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. Worst, worst thing out of it. Right? And I got, I got a lot of free Tupperware from the hotel because <laughs> they would put out. That's honestly, I think that was, wasn't it right then? It really helped me to uh, figure out the, uh, eggs. the, the, the hard boiled eggs really helped me because they put out a breakfast every morning that was free for us. But of course they put the hash browns and, oh, uh, and the toast they put out, but they always had hard, hard boiled eggs. They had two, they had little cups, but had two hard boiled eggs uh, peeled in there. And I got two of those. So that was four eggs every day. And we noticed both of us that I started feeling good. It really, really boosted me. So that's now that's what I eat every day for breakfast. At least, at least four eggs. If, if not four hard boiled, I get like five or six scrambled. Yeah, but yeah, that's so everything and that's, to me is medicine now. Honestly, again, I feel like in life, anytime you have a struggle or a trauma or anything like that. I know it's hard when you're in it, yeah. but afterwards you can kind of look back and say, Oh, I learned that from this, like that, yeah. like what's the silver lining. So like with that, I felt like the silver lining was we learned that he really needs to have 
hard boiled eggs. So much so. We've talked about it so many times on this channel. And then I think I talked about it uh, whenever they asked me to speak on the last cruise. Yeah. I've had, I had, we had a guy walk up to me in the breakfast buffet on the other thing and said, I'm eating your breakfast today. Thank you for the tips on the eggs. I was like, wow. Okay. I know. I was like, wow, we are getting somewhere. <laughs> so, that yeah, a, that I thought that was a, a really good learning experience yeah. about that. Because otherwise, I don't know if we would have ever figured that out. All right. Um, and then plus we got all new flooring, which that yeah. was really a bonus. But where I was going with the Tupperware thing is when they put out the, the they put out little containers every morning, the food was already pre-made. So you just went up because it was still during the sea time, uh, the sea word. They you go and collect, you just go up there and grab a container full of the food already made for you. So what I did, they had omelets already made and everything. Well, I took all the potatoes and gave them to the dog. This is before uh, this was before we got uh, Samson. Oh yeah. Yeah, I gotta go catch Rosie. She, our our uh, vacuum cleaner just turned on. I gotta catch her because I don't know if I have my thing turned up. Uh, oh, I thought up. you did. But anyways, so I've collected all those and we use them now. In fact, when we travel with the dogs, we use those as our food bowls. So if I forget or leave them, they haven't cost me any money. It was just swag from our trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another I mean, look on the bright side. Uh, yeah, Reichman said, Kelly lives where I went to college. Her husband teaches there. Oh, that's nice. really cool. Shauna said, Her story is really inspirational, too. Kelly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Shauna said, he's version of, there's an app for that. I have a video for that. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Uh, Keto Simple said, I've tried talking Chandra into getting a creamy. She said no. Mine did too Aww. at first. It's just, you got to wear them down. <laughs> you need a friend to show them. Right. That's what it took me because I'm probably just like Chandra and I was just like, I'm not going to spend. We've already got an ice cream maker. Uh -huh. I am not spending money another ice cream maker when we have a perfectly good working one. And then whenever Jamie brought hers, because she was like, no, you need to try this. I'm like, girl, don't you don't need to put it in your car and waste space. It's no big deal. She goes, no, it's but just wait. ice cream. But wait, there's more. I know. I'm like, it's just ice cream. Like, come on. And so she brought it, and then we tried it, and I was like, okay, fine. Speaking of which, we're just gonna make one right now. And then um but of course, we didn't buy it immediately because I was like, okay, I, I agree it. that it is good, but we're going to wait until the price is like less than $100. We're not going to be spending $200 on an appliance for ice cream. So we waited until we got a good price. Too, yeah, it is kind of loud. Um, so, yeah, you just look for the deals, and I think they're going to keep going down. Shauna said the night he chugged the keto chow shakes. That's what I'm saying. I didn't make them correctly, but it looked like I was going to get sick of them. Keto <laughs> Simple so said uh, to Jackie, maybe show Shonda what it can do. How good ice cream. She doesn't like ice cream. She likes the stuff that goes into ice cream. Well, they have a mix and button. Yeah. But yeah, just maybe at the next uh, keto event that y'all have up there, maybe somebody can bring so everybody can try it. Right. Just, just a thought. Jackie said, you can borrow it till April to see if you even like it. Oh, oh. that's really so nice of you, Jackie. Take it to a uh, test room with them, basically? Yeah. That's awesome. Shana said, Shelly, we will have to order Ladybird coffee bombs to be delivered from Sprouts for the cruise when I get there. Okay. Shana. We can have them waiting for you. I don't have to order them to be delivered. We can actually go to Sprouts. I can even take you to Sprouts. I have a vehicle, and we can drive to Sprouts and pick them up and buy all of them that we want. And then right around the corner from there is a Dutch Bros. Oh, that's true. In fact, I was going to ask you if you wanted me to go again this morning, or this afternoon, I mean, because I had to get out again to go do some stuff today. Shauna said, great tagline from the kitchen of Hungry Heath. Cooper's Inferno makes your lips hot mad. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Kim said, bedtime. Nice revisiting Good you. Good night. I hope you enjoyed your time. Sana said, have a wonderful night and weekend, everyone. You, you too, too, Sana. Thanks for joining us. She, she's been up since 4 a.m. Oh, and it's no now 1045 yeah. and they have a busy day. Ooh. Brenda said, spice levels. I don't know about spices. 
So yeah, we actually make our own spice blends. Yes. And we, oh, I see Shauna told her. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we just, we make a uh, pork and poultry rub. We make a beef rub. Those are our two that are not spicy. Mm -hmm. We have a taco seasoning that has a little bit of spice in it because we've been told it's tacos. Uh, and then our really spicy. So I would recommend this only for chili heads is our Texas five spice. Um, so the one that oh, yeah, radical blend, do uh, another blend tomorrow. I got to run it through. Yeah. Radical geek was saying her lips were still on fire. Um, uh, she got a special blend of that called the Cooper's Inferno. Inferno. Uh, so we have a couple, uh, channel members that are, uh, I should say the hungry horde. They have a farm and they gave us their peppers. And so we made a special blend just for like, of course them, since they gave us the peppers. And then we also, um, uh, sent it to, I know like our, Spice heads. Yeah, our spice heads that like stuff where your lips are tingling and numb and, and on fire and you're, crying, yeah, and you're crying. Yeah, and you're crying and everything else. It was also because it's all homemade, uh, homemade, uh, homegrown peppers from the Cooper's farm. Yes. So that's why we named that, named it that. Shauna said, I started watching you when it first came out. It induced nightmares. So I had to stop. Oh, what? I, oh, the, see, not you. Wait, yeah, you. that's what I was like. Wait, what? I gave you nightmares. Oh, I'm sorry. I honestly have then no you're probably not gonna idea. Like it then. You're probably not gonna like it then because she doesn't like uh, horror movies or scary movies the way that Renee does. That's where y'all differ. Well, I think it depends on if it's scary. I don't like grotesque or slasher shows. films. Yeah, or slashers. Renee said, "No, nah, wasn't scary. I just." want to watch them all oh you don't want to stop oh okay oh shauna said it wasn't the scare it was the emotional oh, okay. twisted behavior okay oh, then i like gosh. those i like those yeah that could be heavy hard to hit though you know carrie said good night good night brother Harry. thanks for stopping by have a great weekend Harry said, hope everyone has a great and cheesy weekend i've been asleep for i don't know how long just woke up i would stay up i have food Distribution Saturday for church. Oh, well, enjoy. He'll be there for coffee talk. Oh, that's all right. Renee said, y'all had an overly excitable smoke alarm. Oh, that's right. Oh, that one too. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> Where I had to do stunts. <laughs> Jackie said, sorry, I'm quiet. Really tired tonight. So mostly listening. That's oh, fine. you had a busy day. That's fine. Yeah. You're good. Shana said, I remember the breakfast guy that was cool. Hotel swag. Laugh out loud. Uh, Renee said, I think that freeze brought us even closer to because uh, we chatted in the cold while I would heat the pups in the car and charge my phone. Right? Oh, that's, that's true. true. Yes, because yes. it was like, okay, we're freezing. Because uh, we like... It was fun listening to her teeth chatter. <laughs> Uh, because you didn't have anywhere you could go for heat, so you just had to use your vehicle and hope you had enough gas to last. Right, right when the time for bed, Dark are giving me the eye. Oh, I See y'all on Sunday for Matreya's. Good night, Good night right when. Shauna said, Oh, Bill Trip. Well, yeah, like we can go to, uh, we could like that Saturday. Oh, yeah, we're speaking of, we've been kind of talking about that. But that Wednesday when her and Teresa are here. No, oh. that's Thursday. Thursday, my bad. What did I say? Wednesday. Wednesday so Sean is yeah. supposed to get here Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but I was so we can either go Saturday to Sprouts. Okay. Um, oh, or we'll just go the weekend before. It's up to you if you want if you want to go to Sprouts or if you just rather us pick up a few things, we can do that. Well, I was saying is we can also take her to uh uh, what's the one, one downtown where we have to buy the spice, the peppers, uh, central market. Yeah. We can take her there too. It's like, it's like HEB's version of whole foods. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, and you can get lost in that store the way they <laughs> set up. It's weird. Well, we'll have to see because we'll have, I that's feel all like, to drive. <laughs> no, I feel like 
like, I'm trying to think when we would have time. Exactly, that's true too. Um, because Friday's already booked. Yeah. Um, and then Saturday is really the only time, and then we and leave that's, Sunday. And honestly, that's halfway to Galveston. <laughs> I know. Renee said the beach hounds are doing well. Devara continues with her position of standing over him. Oh. Others say it's like she's protecting him. Aww. Well, she probably is. She's his therapy dog. Aw, so sweet. She's like, I got to protect my bubba. Shauna said, I'm pretty sure Angry Texas Five Spice or Cooper's Inferno would send me to the hospital. You sprinkle um, some of that cheese. You'd be okay. <laughs> I put it on the, uh, the habanero cheese. <laughs> it's like a one-two punch for her. Poor right. thing. Um... I, I, yeah, the angry or the Coopers. Oh, girl, no, I don't even know if you could breathe it. I think even if you smelled it, you would probably be flat out on your back. We were actually it. talking about it the other day that we need to start wearing a gas mask when we start making ours because it's even getting to uh, us. Sometimes. Good night, Jen. Good night. I'm glad you came tonight. You yeah. had great questions. Yeah. Jamie said, I'll forever be the creamy pusher in your eyes. <laughs> Walking around handing out samples. Laugh out loud. That's awesome. <laughs> right? Mrs. Feel good. <laughs> she said, I did bring uh, them pre-frozen in a cooler. That's true. They were already done. Oh, goodness. But yeah, that was that was fun. I'm so glad, y'all. I had a great time tonight. Yeah. How about you? It was amazing. <sighs> now for our next trick. Oh, I know. Man. Like now, I feel like I can finally. Breathe. I feel like I'm finally relaxing, because there's where I get like stressed. But you know, if we had a major tornado group rip through the house, I would be more under control. <laughs> <laughs> right. So but, oh, it's almost it's a little after. What time is it? Because I think the clock is wrong on the on the uh, on the stove. It's a minute slower on the stove. Oh, uh, only a minute. Okay. Jamie said, and I have a trench coat. It's red like Carmen San Diego. That's <laughs> awesome. You should wear that like to uh well, it's be so hot. I was gonna say for keto con, because you could be like, where'd I go? Um, uh, Renee said Central Market is just very proud of their stuff. Yes. Yeah, now it depends. Like some stuff, like the one oil I like, if I buy it directly, it's 15 a bottle. But if I get it at Central Market, it's only 14 a bottle. Oh, we get a coupon. But I know. Um, it, it just depends. And I think a lot, they have a lot of specialty items. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're always going to pay more when it's some specialty like but that's why I also Hungarian why I say it's, cheese it's infused their version. with black gold or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but that's why I say it's like their version of Whole Foods. Yeah. I think Whole Foods is a little pricey too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why they call it Whole Paycheck. But, and I also think like, um, like their meat and stuff is top quality. Like yes. how I feel like is like, because it's owned by HEB. I feel like HEB's distributors, they're like, okay, our top of the top grade goes to Central Market. And then the second grade, we're going to send to our high-end HEBs. And then they distribute there. And then when you're like the podunk HEB on the corner that was opened in like 1990, like you get the last pickings. They got Joe V's. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. If that HB don't get the last pickings, they get next to the last, and then the very last pickings go to Joe V's. Joe V's is a, it's almost like a, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a restaurant supply store, maybe. Because everything's it's, like, they, it's weird the way they stock the restaurant, the 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 store. It's like Sack and Stave, right? Yeah, kind of like, but they just open up a box and set it down on the shelf. Yeah. And you go dig through it yourself. Yeah. It's kind of weird, but the prices are good. Yeah. And the food is good. Yeah. It's, it's just like different. You, it's a discount market, I think is what they call it. Maybe it is. like, uh, But you can't always get the same What stuff. They might have it today. Next week, they won't. Right. And um, and then I noticed like, most of their meats at Jovi's are like um, club style, where it's yeah. like a big pack of stuff. Yeah. Like That's why it makes, it makes me think of like a restaurant supply. 
Yeah. And so what they said or what Nicole told us before is they don't have any individual departments. So like right now, if you go to HB, you have the butcher, you have a cheese counter, you have um, the b -b -b I'm trying floral. To think. Yeah, the floral. Yeah. Like you have like the, the heads seafood, of those the bakery. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, the bakery department. They don't do any of that. That's how they cut costs. So instead of having an on-site butcher, everything's already done. So you can't say, oh, well, I really want this steak. No, you get whatever's already packaged yeah. or you don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Jamie's saying, the clock on the wall says 3 o'clock, last call. <laughs> nice. Uh, Shauna said, I don't need a grocery store field trip. I'd rather go someplace fun on that Saturday. And I think Sarah, yeah, Sarah's coming on Friday. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Um, I was like, do you really want to go to Sprouts on a Saturday? That's what I'm saying. So we just pick uh, them up ahead of time then. Yeah, we'll just get them ahead of time. Just let us know how many you think you want. Yeah. But um, that Friday, I might be going anyway. So <laughs> see if we need anything. Well, probably not because we're fixing to leave. So right? Yeah, you're going to be cooking all day long. And I don't know yeah, but I'm going to set it down to let it go. So. Yeah, we're still gonna have a, like a lot to do. On yeah, because now obviously I gotta make the the, the deviled eggs. <laughs> the deviled eggs. The uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot. You're gonna have to be cleaning up. Uh -huh. You're gonna have to be arranging the deck. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a lot you're gonna have to be doing, sir. Or well, I might be <laughs> uh, sick that day. If you're sick, uh -huh. then we can't have a freaking party. Oh, that's right. Oh, damn. Damn it. So yeah. Anyways, no, you're look. Like, I didn't even notice you've been wearing jeans. That's I was how much like, you pay attention to me. I was like, I wonder why I didn't feel your like leg leg. I was like, what's this? Wearing jeans. Just keep rubbing my nails. How am I supposed to like fill you up if all you got is these long leg prisons on? It's been chilly out today. Uh, Shauna said, I can help cook. We will need a bunch of bags of Lily's chips because I will not be making the devil's egg. So we got to go to Sprouts for that too. Yeah, you're going to be making the fudge, right? Oh, fudge. Oh, whatever. You're going to be there like, oh, I guess nobody's getting this fudge. It's all mine. I can already hear his joke, right, Shauna? You'll make a batch and be like, okay, I think I finished all the fudge. You know what you need to make? Fudge. Watch this here. You no. know what you make? Huh. Some of the bark. Oh, that's true. No, this will be Shauna. She'll be like, okay, I made all the fudge heat. And because I'll be working that Friday, I think. Maybe I'm off. But anyway, she'll say, look, I made all the fudge. That's finally done. And I'm already foreseeing this, right? And Heath will be like, uh, what fudge are you talking about? This is mine. 100%. 100%. Am I wrong? Of course. <laughs> Where's my creamy? Shada said, yes. She goes, yes. Wait until you see the fudge I made for Keto Chow Valentine Challenge. Ooh, you don't have to. I need a picture, Shauna. Um, well, we should call it a night. Look, it's already 10 15, y'all. Yeah, we got a lot of dishes to do from tonight. I don't know who this we is. Is there a mouse in this pocket? Yeah, it's telling you to get on them dishes. Oh. <laughs> I got to take the trash out. Listen, mister. Who's talking to you to right now? <laughs> You're way down there. I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He's so funny. All right. Uh, oh, she sent me a photo. Oh, that's so cute. What is it? Oh, she said, don't share it yet because it's a challenge. Oh, wow. That's so cute, Shauna. <sighs> now you're making me yawn. Well, thank you, everybody. Yes. And everybody who's still here. Wow, half of you are still here. That's amazing. Putting up with us. I know. And our shenanigans. I'm getting hungry. Um, but thank you all again. You all made this live so special. And I'm just so happy. And... um I don't know what else to say. I'm just really happy, you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you gave us a thumbs up. Um, and everybody who was new, that was awesome. And then we got to let the dogs out. You got to clean up. Oh, oh, you got to turn it off, too. And then we got to get him to work cleaning up these dishes. I got to take the trash out 
street like normal. Yeah. Good night, y'all. Have Good a wonderful night. weekend. See you on Sunday for Matreya's Coffee Talk. Y'all have a good one. Be careful. 